Good afternoon, folks. Good afternoon. If you could give me an audio check real quick before I start jawboning. I'm using my Bose headset today, so I'm not sure if you guys can pick me up clearly. If the volume's good, just give me a 5x5. Five five. I'll be looking for a tweet and every response. Thank you. Appreciate that. Just hang tight for a minute or so. I told her by All right, folks, welcome back. This is going to be a very long one. Usually when I say it's short, it's a long one. So we're going to try to do a, a short and succinct presentation. Uh, it's about a sub subject matter I have very little experience with, obviously. I mentioned on Twitter moments ago, I was uh, asking folks with more insight and experience with these funded prop challenges and accounts that uh, certain companies out there make allowance for for people. And I asked several times, you know, for the future side of it, and everybody was telling me, you know, the Forex, you know, prop fund and things like that. And that wasn't helping me. So I needed to have some kind of framework to present. I get asked a lot, you know, if I could talk about how to pass a, a, a a prop fund challenge. Um, I think I can speak pretty freely without me actually going out here and doing this, but I know some of you are going to be like, okay, just do it. So easy, so do it. Um, you're essentially trading a, a demo account anyway. Um, so I find it funny that people that will rag on me because I'm teaching with that medium for the protection that it offers me because I'm not a licensed financial advisor, uh, that you're doing the same thing when you're trying to pass these prop fund challenges. So I just want to toss that in there as a reminder because um, if it's that important for you to pass it to get to your funded account, what makes it any less significant as a teaching medium for people that have no experience? So let's so, just so post that as an opening question for all of you to chew on. All right, so how to pass a funded prop challenge? And I mentioned earlier, by way of a poll, I knew I didn't need much time to see it. Right away, everybody was you know, <laughs> going going through the $50,000 threshold. And I think most of that is because of the cost. Yeah, because you don't know if you're going to do well. You don't know if you're going to be successful. And in fact, if everyone was being honest and literally put on a polygraph, do you believe you're going to pass this? Uh, probably not. They may say yes, but they'll fail that as a lie detector test. Uh, but most of them probably already expect that they're going to fail. But they just want to see what's going to happen. The equivalent of what every trader does with a demo. Well, you know, the charts are moving around. I got time. I'm on lunch break. I got my phone in my hand smoking on my cigarette. You know, it's my 10 o'clock people time. Let's do the smoke break and let's try to do a demo trade and push the button, see what happens. That same mentality carries itself into these Funded challenges. They think, well, you know, what's a couple hundred dollars if I go in here and spend $165, $175 for a funded account challenge? Hey, I might win, right? I might get in there and might get lucky and get something. And then that might encourage me to keep doing this. There's a lot of times folks that have reached out to me that have failed these challenges and asked for me to talk on it, speak on it, give my mind an opinion about it and how I would do it if I were doing it. Uh, my son is about to do one. He did not pass. I saw somebody, uh, I saw it in passing, but I have so many tweets. If you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Somebody said that my son passed a evaluation. No, he did not. The only thing he did was he used the 14-day the trial. So I was working with him in that regard, and I showed that screen recording with him. 95% um, of the executions he messed around with trying to 
do his own thing, pushing the button, seeing what happens, getting familiar with the platform. Uh, I just watched because I'm not familiar with it either. Uh, but he had some drawdown, and I helped him correct that on Friday, and you watched that happen. Every one of those trades was me telling him, do this, don't do that. Well, you can hear some of it in the little screen recordings. So, no, he's not an ace. He's not a, 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 a trader that can go out there and make money right now. He's absolutely green. In fact, he's very nervous because he thought it was going to be a lot easier for him, like video games, because he's a video gamer. So I'm going to give you my opinion on how I'm going to work with him in, in passing his evaluation. But one of the concerns before I go into this topic, I know there's a lot of funded accounts. Well, I shouldn't say a lot. I shouldn't say that word a lot because I don't know how many there are. There may not be a lot. OK, but the bigger named ones are reaching out to me and tweeting to me, hey, look, you know, we're waiting for you to, to do this. And to which I'm going to publicly respond here. I also know that you're waiting to do trade copiers. <laughs> now, I do the same fucking thing. Trust me. If I saw somebody this good, I would be copying the fuck out of their trades. OK, so, of course, it makes perfect sense. You all want me to sign on with you all. In fact, you probably would pay me to do it versus me paying you. I get it. I understand. But I'm not going to rep anyone particular company. Um, I mentioned in passing, I won't say the name here because I don't want to get the impression that I'm in a, an affiliation with any one of them because I will never enter an affiliation with any funded account challenge, uh, prop fund account. I won't do those types of things. I'm not looking for partnerships and I don't want the, uh, the drama that comes with all that shit. So I like to be a free agent where I can talk and give my free opinion, and it's not influenced by anything. If it's good, I'll say it's good. If it sucks ass, I'll tell you it sucks ass. Don't ask me about brokers because they all fucking suck. You're going to lose money, and you're always going to blame the broker. Sometimes they run shitty uh, operations. Sometimes their customer service is lacking. It is what it is. You're not going to find a perfect broker. Every broker out there sucks. There you go. There's your, there's your blanket statement. But my approach to teaching my son Cameron, who is now 18 years old, uh, he, he settled on a company that I don't know anything about. And there's a gentleman I support with viewership on YouTube. He uses them. And I'll just say that, and you can kind of like draw the, the lines together and see who I'm referring to. But he wanted to do the $150,000 account. And I asked him this morning, I said, you know, why do you want to do that? He goes, it's because it's more money. And I said, well, what's wrong with the 50000 Now, some of you assholes that are listening, they always look for some kind of angle to, to troll and rag me and whatever. It's not about the cost, okay? It's the basis of why does a trader choose to do that higher rung, especially as their first option. Just because you can afford to do it doesn't make it right. 99% of you that are doing these funded account challenges don't even have consistency yet in demo. You're just trying to gamble. You just want, you know, what happens if I get a little bit of scratch, a little bit of money? That'll really help me. That'll motivate me. Then I'll take it serious. Then I'll learn. Then I'll start watching those fucking boring ICT videos, right? <laughs> It'll be something to inspire me because I got some money in my pocket, some bread. When in fact, it's not advantageous at all for one of you to start with that higher end amount, whatever the higher thresholds are. I know there's other companies out there that offer larger quote unquote account balances, but you don't have those account balances. And I'm not going to beat up the whole idea that, you know, if they say this is the most you can lose, this is the size of account you're trading with, that's bullshit too. That's not even accurate either. That's not an accurate assessment. You're not trading with whatever the max loss is. Because think about what you're saying. You're trading with full fucking margin, no stop loss. Let's go for broke on every trade and you want to lose your entire account. That makes no sense. So the folks that sit on the sidelines and rib anyone that does these types of trading venues, they're talking out their ass too. So I'm trying to, and this is why I waited for a little while, and I'm probably still premature talking about it today, but because my son's about to endeavor in it, I'm sharing with you one of the things I've brought to his attention. And he's kind of wrestling with it. You know, being a typical 18-year-old, he thinks he knows everything, even the shit that I do. He 
he thinks he has a strong opinion about. And I'm trying not to kill his spirit. I don't want to kill his will. I don't want to kill his spirit. I want to guide him. Okay, kind of like steering him in the right direction, but also allow him to, to fail a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that because he's going to learn more from doing that. But he wanted to do the 150000 and I, I asked him this morning. I said, uh, why do you want to do it? He just because I can trade bigger. I said, do you remember what it felt like on Friday when that was just a trial? That's a trial. And I know the company that knows that that platform was their company. You're not going to know that account because it's not his account. I had a friend sign it up with his cell phone number because I know all you motherfuckers are waiting for me. <laughs> so anyway, but he will obviously have to do it with his own. And one of my concerns is this. You know, let's just say he follows the rules I'm going to outline here. Okay, I have them written down. If he follows them, and he does well, and he makes money. I'm concerned that what I'm outlining here isn't like gangbusters types of re returns. It's not nothing like that. It's bread and butter, build a baseline income, and start there as a foundation. Not win Robin's Cup type returns. Not fucking double the account in you know a day. Not get fifteen thousand dollars. That was just me fixing the shit he was doing in the account. That's all that was. His aptitude as a trader is infantile, like starting right now, baby pips level. Preschool, that, that's, that's where he's at. He's never had an active interest in it. He works at a coffee shop, and I've made him work that job. He pays for his own car insurance. He pays for his own gas. He pays for his own spending when he's a little girlfriend, which is visiting right now. She probably hears me raising my voice, thinking, who the hell is he talking to? But I make him do that because I want all of my children to feel the desire to do better. Giving them money isn't going to help. It's just going to make them do what, what my oldest son thinks. Give me more. <laughs> you gave me this, so give me more. And I don't want to create and cultivate that in the other ones. I learned my lesson with my oldest, and... My daughter has no interest still in trading. She just wants to be a perpetual college student. So hopefully they see what Caleb's been doing, which is one of the instigations with Cameron. So Cameron has seen what Caleb is doing. So now my hopes are happen, happening like I wanted to see them unfold. Not to the speed at which you know, I would like to see them happen as a father, but it's, at least it's progress. And I'm trying not to be that typical dad, join my alma mater, go to my college, do everything. I, I want them to find their own niche and their own little way of doing it. But I also don't want to see them fuck up. You know, I want to see them take the right path. I'm not asking for you to give me in, input on it because none of you know my family. You don't know me. And I'm not going to take your advice in this regard. So I, I appreciate the willingness for some of you to want to tell me what your advice is about how I should teach them as as ICT or their dad, but none of you are in a position to tell me how to do that. So just know that I'm not interested in, the, in your opinion, that specific topic. But I asked them this morning, I said, <clears throat> you wanted the $150,000 and that's not a problem. It's, it's less than 400 bucks, big deal. I told him that I would pay that first amount because I want him to feel like I'm investing in him so that way it gives him a little bit. And some of you might say, well, you shouldn't have done that. He should have had to pay his own money. Yes, he should. In, in certain respects, he should. But I want him to know that he's investing his time and his energy and his attention. But dad's investing that little bit of money to make it feel like I really got to try harder than I would if it was just my own money. Because it's not a lot of money. Even to him, it's not a lot of money. He doesn't have a car. Man. I paid it off on the 14th, I bought him a car. And for some of you that like to keep score on what it was, it's a simple fucking 2022 Sentra Nissan. It's brand new. It's not like big deal. Okay. But it has every option for it. And for him at his age bracket and his girlfriend's impressed. And that's all that matters. It's easy on the gas. It's his car insurance because he had a car accident. It's just a little expensive. So because I make him work a job 
and he doesn't have any real skills outside of the homeschooling he's done here. He doesn't want to go to college. He doesn't want to go into the military because I told him, don't fucking do it. So what have I done? I've guided him into a condition that presents that opportunity for him to decide it's college to learn how to be a good slave for somebody else and make somebody else rich and be told you can do this when you are approved for a vacation report this time go home when we say you're done you you go to eat when we say you can go to eat or he learns what dad does so (laughs) it finally happened He's had enough of customer service and people yelling at him and cussing at him. He's coming home and mad sometimes. This is bullshit. I don't want to do with this anymore, Dad. I'm like, I'm glad to hear it. I'm not even going to yell at you for cussing. <laughs> I, I want to hear. I've been waiting for this. So he said something that really made me proud because I would lay money in his fucking hands to trade. I would give. I would. Spot him the fucking cash. You tell me what you want to do. If you want the $150,000, you show me consistency. Dad will drop $150,000 in whatever broker you want to fucking use, and it's all on right there. I'll sit co-pilot with you if you want to, but if you don't need that and you know what you're doing, I'm all for it. Let's go. But I do not want to spend the $150,000 on some fucking Ivy League prep school bullshit college because it's garbage. It's fucking trash. Your jobs aren't promised there. My stuff, I'm proving that that is promised. You place your ass in front of these charts, looking for the shit I'm teaching you, you will find your payday. It's all going to be different based on what you're looking for. But I have all kinds of opportunities to choose from. And I have things I'm not going to share. So I have a little bit more advantage than the average bear. So I'm very happy. But he says to me, he says, Dad, because he sees the bullshit you know, like everybody else does. You know, he's not oblivious. He's a kid that's on the internet. He sees the, the jokers that are trying to get a name for themselves by trolling and they can't do shit in their own trading. And he's like, I don't want anyone to be able to say you gave it to me. And I was like, what do you mean? What, what do you mean by that? He said, I don't want you to give me the money, Dad. Like, I don't, I, I don't want to do that. I saw this guy on the internet. He's using these prop pants. I was like, the, like the, the funded stuff. He goes, yeah, I want to do that. What's your opinion about that? I said, I don't know. I have students that are doing it, and they've made money, but I don't know personally. I said, but look into whatever it is that you want to do, and let's talk about it, but don't jump into anything yet. And this has been going on for about, I don't know, it was the week immediately after Christmas because Christmas week was a bunch of bullshit at his job, and he had enough of it. And I, I tried to play like I wasn't really giving a shit. Like I wanted him to feel the pressure. Like dad doesn't even care. I wanted him to feel that pressure. Because w- he's not even really in the rat race, right, folks? I mean, he's really not there. He's a kid working a freaking part-time job and you know, bitching about how he did an eight-hour day and people cussing at him through a drive through window, right? <laughs> That's a hard day. <laughs> but I get it. I get it. Nobody wants to deal with that bullshit. So he's sitting here telling me, that he doesn't want me to give him the money. He wants to do it on his own because that way, if he does see anybody talk shit, he can feel proud that I didn't give it to him. I may help him in understanding how to trade, but I didn't give him the money because you know the old adage where, oh, yeah, you got daddy's money. He's seen it in movies. He's seen it you know, mentioned on the internet. And I'm proud of him. And you, you may not see it as something to be proud of, but as a, as a fucking dad, I love that. Like, man, like that, that is the shit you want to hear. Like, I, I love that. I love the fact that he wants to go on his own steam, and that fucking fires me up. See, I, I spotted Caleb. So he wants to do what? He wants to outdo his brother, which is normal. That's normal competition. That's sibling rivalry in the right in the best way. So that way he can one up his brother, his older brother, say, "Yeah, but dad didn't give it to me. I did it on my own." And guess what? Damn it, that fucking feels great. I fucking love that. And I'm not trying to diminish anything that Caleb's done. And Caleb, if you're listening, don't be pissed off. Dad's proud of you. But I'm absolutely stoked 
that he's at least having that mindset that I don't want you to do it for me. And that feels really good. I love it. Like I'm jacked the fuck up. I've been hopped up on goofballs all fucking day long with this shit. And I honestly, I was wrestling around with even talking about it. And finally, you know, like anything else, obsessive compulsive disorder kicks in. So I had to start talking about it online and asking. And I knew if I got the right information, I'd be inspired to be here jawboning with you. So here we are. So, but I asked him this morning, I said, you know, whatever you decide to do today, today being before he goes to bed, I told him, I said, before you lay your head down, before you fall asleep, I want you to send a text to dad and I'll see it when I wake up. Whatever that amount is, that's the one you're going to go with. But I want you to justify in your limited understanding right now, this, you know, this is the conversation we had this morning. Tell me what it is that makes you feel like you have to use the 150000 If you stand by the fact that these are the reasons why you feel confident this is the way you need to do it, that'll support it. If you can't, I want you to be honest with me. But I want you to be honest and tell me why you want to do it with the one hundred fifty. $150,000, you're not getting $150,000. See, initially he thought he was getting $150,000 in an account with his name on it, which obviously no one gets that. So when I explained it to him, that you're having what is being billed as the equivalent of that much, forget all those numbers. It's all bullshit. Okay, I'm going to break it down so that way you understand how you should really internalize it, see it, and this is how I would interpret it. If I was dead ass broke, no money, lost everything, I went out there, did a full max, you know, 100% all in demo trade, <laughs> lost everything. If I had to go this route, and I had depression and anxiety because everything is going on. How would I start and build myself up? I'm going to tell you that that approach. And this is exactly what I pitched to him as well. This is like skid row beginning. This is bottom rung, the bottom of the barrel. This is the way you start it. I would sit my ass in a church. I'd go to a church and say, look, I need help. I don't use drugs. I don't do alcohol. I don't do any of those types of things. But whatever help you can give me, I greatly appreciate it, and I will return it back to you. you aren't, you're not just giving me something. I'm going to give it back to you with interest. I would find a way if I had to stand on the corners and panhandle for a week to get whatever the amount of money was to do this. That's what I would do. I would swallow pride. I would do what I had to do to get whatever I had to hit, have scraped together. And I would do this. That's the approach. That's the mindset I gave him because I want him to think like, because if he wants to do it on his own, that's awesome. But I want to give him a procedure. This is what you teach your children. When dad's gone, this is how you teach them. Okay. You approach it like this. Not that funded accounts are going to be around forever, because I don't think they will be, to be honest with you. But you know, while the time is there, you know, this is a, a model that I think this is my opinion. Doesn't mean it's perfect. Doesn't mean it's guaranteed that everybody's going to follow it and make money. This means that you've asked for this opinion, and now because I have a real world interest in even referring to it, this is how it happened. This is the the organic transition to even bringing this up. 18-year-old son, who was 17 at the time, said he wants to go this route. Wonderful. He told me this morning, he goes, Dad, if I lose, I don't want to lose your money. It's bad enough if I lose, I, I, I'll, I'll feel bad. But if I lose your money, it'll feel worse, and I'll feel ashamed, and I don't want you to look at me like that, and I, I don't want to be like a failure in your eyes. And, of course, you know, I got emotional, didn't, didn't want to hear that part. And I told him, I said, listen, even if you fall on your fucking face doing this, you're, you're, you're just starting. The fact that you're even trying has got me so jacked up. I'm so proud. Like I've been waiting. I've been waiting for you to show an interest. And maybe it's because you were too young and you weren't interested because of video games and homeschooling and you know, your girlfriend and soccer and all the bullshit that we've had you in sports your entire life. It's distracting. I know. 
But I knew if I put your ass in that working environment and work hardening where you have to be told, do this, don't do that, and make next to nothing. And you have to work on holidays. I didn't like seeing him do that, but I loved knowing that that shit was going to get in his crawl and he would hate it. But it's exactly what I, I want all of you to fucking hate that because that's what's cheating you out of the life you're wanting really to live. Not Lamborghini lifestyle, but freedom to do what the fuck you want to do when you want to do it. Call your own shots and pay what you're paying right now. If you live the way you live right now, the only thing that changed is you ain't got to go somewhere else to earn the same amount of money, and you're living good. You don't think you're living good right now because you're sweating your ass off to get that little bit of money. But if you didn't have to leave the house to get that same amount of money, <laughs> man, that's fucking sweet, isn't it? That's all I'm telling. I'm trying to have that little bit of a paradigm shift where if you could just do that or half of that, get half of the income that's required to live like you live right now. That's a big weight off your back. Different approach. Different way of teaching how to trade and what you should strive for. But he says, I don't want to lose your money, Dad. And I think if I do it this way, I'll take it more serious and I'll be more likely to put the effort in that I think is going to require. Because Friday, what we were doing, he was like, this is a, this is a lot harder than I was expecting it to be. Because he wants, when you get into the trade, to get in and watch what you see me do, because this is what he's watched. He's watched those videos that I put on Twitter or the recordings. I put them up on my YouTube channel, and they're sped up. So unfortunately, the, the byproduct of that is every trade you get into, they're going to move that quick. They don't. They don't do that. And the reason why I speed them up is because the attention span for most viewers is very short. And that way, you're watching the entirety of my execution from entry to stop placement to targets and partials and trailed stop loss and closure to, you know, to the termis. You're watching all that in a very small span of time. And on Twitter, it's only 2 minutes and 20 seconds. And I try to keep it at like 2 minutes and 18 seconds. So he has been conditioned, unfortunately, and I kind of hate this now, to expect when you get into a trade, like we were in a few of them on Friday, and he was like, like, it's feeling like it's taking forever. And I'm like, it's because you are afraid it's going to turn on you. You have not embraced that uncertainty yet, which is what I'm teaching all of you to do with these, these tape reading sessions. You're submitting yourself to the process of trusting what you expect to see in price being conditioned to watch the ebb and flow of each individual candle as it paints higher, lower, give a little, take a little, give a little, take a little until it goes ultimately where you're thinking it's going to go. He doesn't know what it's like to be in the trade with the expectation it's going to run to a specific fair value gap or a buy side liquidity pool. I can point to it in the chart like I'm teaching you, but it's all the other something different when you are in a trade and it was a trial. It wasn't even an evaluation. It was just a trial. And because his gamer mentality, this is why I'm trying to teach you all, don't view this as a game. It's not a fucking video game. It's war. It's absolute fucking war. You're going to feel it internally. Even if it's demo, your pride, the right or wrong equation is being pushed on yourself. The outcome means something to you. And even though it may be a demo and you get it wrong, you're going to cuss it out. You're going to reset your demo account. You're going to say, fuck this. Man. This is bullshit. It didn't happen. Let me start it again. And that's unfortunately terrible because you're conditioning yourself to not respect the risk and only expect what? The sugar-coated outcomes. He's really good at Fortnite. He's really good at Call of Duty. But he's a fucking noob at this. And he doesn't like that. He doesn't like it. He thought that he could just walk out here, listen to where I think it's going to go, and then just go in and trade it. And if you saw the shit he was trying to get in on, I told him, I said, when you think it's time to go up, you push this button, buy it. You know what the first question he asked me was? How many can I buy? 
What the fuck? Is that not out of the book of losers? That's straight up gambler's mentality right there. How much can I buy? What the hell? But that's exactly what all of us encounter. When we first start doing this, it's the first thing. How many can we buy? And wouldn't you know it, these funded account challenges all give you exactly what you're looking for. You can trade up to, for a $50,000 account, you can trade up to five contracts. You are a fucking clown if you try to trade with five contracts. Stupid. That's dumb. Dumb, dumb. These thresholds that they have here, which we're going to go over in a, in a couple minutes. Let me just get this preamble out of the way. The, uh, they're easy thresholds. I mean, this is some fucking Mickey Mouse, Baby Pip's first post of ICT level shit. That's, I mean, this is right out of the book of ICT. The very first paragraph that you ever read by me talks about this 6% shit. That's easy. That's fucking easy. Literally, like this is not even – this is nothing. All of you, absolutely all of you, in 30 fucking days, okay? Here's what's going to happen. Here's my promise to you. In 30 fucking days, you will all know how to ace that $50,000 evaluation. No problem. Absolutely guaranteed. You will know exactly how to fucking do it for yourself. Now, will you follow the rules? Probably not. But over the next four weeks, that's where we're going. I'm going to teach you how to walk through these Mickey Mouse fucking challenges and like they're nothing. They're absolutely fucking nothing. This is nothing. This is a comic strip. This is easy shit. Anybody can fucking do this. Anybody can do this. The average gambler, the newbie that wants to go out there and hurry up and get to double their account status, five-figure withdrawals, that's where they fuck up. That's how, that's how you fuck up. And my son already showed in the first 10 minutes sitting in front of the charts with him on Friday by, sh by asking, how much can I buy? And I said to him, I said, first of all, that's the wrong question to ask. That's the wrong question. You should have been saying, can I just do this with one contract? That's what I was hoping to hear, but I didn't hear that. Now, I don't need to share this experience with you. I could keep it private, let him do something in a close friend's name, and they split the profits. And these companies would never even fucking know that my son was really behind all those trades. If he did really well, you know what's going to happen. The assholes out there in the company themselves might say, no, you didn't do that. Your dad did that. We're not going to pay you. That's my concern. And if that happens, I'm going to fucking blast that company's name all over the fucking internet and expose them for a bunch of bullshit because I will not push the button for his trades. I did on Friday. I told him, do this, do that, do this, do that. You, well, you heard me. I was guiding him. But if he does this, he's going to do it on his own. And guess what? If he fails, I'm not going to be upset about that. I blew my first accounts, plural. Look what I'm able to tell you what it's going to do in the market now. It's all part of the process of learning. You have to find yourself. That means you have to fall down and figure out that it hurts to do that. So that way you don't take greater risks to fall down harder the next time because you might not have the ability to get back up. And you want to learn in the right conditions. I don't personally think he's ready to do this. I don't. I'm being honest, and I'm his dad, and I'm an inner circle trader. I don't think he has the skill to do it, but I need to let him fucking fail this. And then I can step in as dad, as mentor ICT, and say, okay, this is what you did. This is what you should have done. And this is what I told you to do, and you didn't listen. If he listens to everything I'm going to tell you in this presentation, he'll be fine. But I know, just like me, only do this. Don't do anything else. Well, that, what is that? That's telling me what the fuck to do. I have a problem with that. It's going to be – they make streets after me. They name them one way. And he has that tendency too. Like if anybody's going to be the aggressive, in-your-fucking-face YouTuber and shoves it up your ass, it's him. 
He's the one out of all my boys. He is the one. He's the one that's going to literally be the fucker out there that's a menace. Caleb, eh, he's real laid back last of days. Cool. Just yeah, chill. Try not, not trying to be dramatic. Cameron has always been highly competitive. He's already trying to do it with his brother. His brother made money. Cameron wants to smoke his ass. <laughs> okay. So that's, to me, it's fun. Like, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm dad. I'm sitting back. I know it's fun. It's harmless. And, Cam, and Caleb's not going to try to go, oh, I'm going to do better than you. He's just trying to do what he's been told to do. Follow this model, stick with it, and, don't, and everything will be fine. Cameron's like, I'm going to smoke your ass. So that's the mentality of him. Now, that's the wrong mentality coming in because he thinks it's going to be easy. Push a couple buttons, do a couple combo moves, do this, do that. And it's, you know, you're going to win. No problem. This ain't fucking Fortnite. This ain't Call of Duty. This is war. And he doesn't understand how hard it's going to be in his mind. These candlesticks are going to talk to you continuously. And you've already experienced that now. Reading each one of those candlesticks as I'm talking about it live. You're second guessing me. Some of you are saying, nope, he's wrong there. It's going to reverse. And some of you are praying I'm getting it wrong so you can go and troll on the internet. And you're not even, none of you, if you're doing that, you're not doing it right. You're not listening to me explain why it should be doing what it's doing and then it does it. You, com it, you completely lost it. You missed the opportunity to see it. The uncertainty, that moment of not knowing what's going to happen. So on Friday, I explained to him that if you know what you're looking for, you can go in the marketplace and use a stop loss of less than five handles and use an account size and balance that will permit you to make this kind of return. You know, $19,000, $15,000, $12,000, $9,000, $5,000, $4,000, $3,000, $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, $4,000, $5,000, $6,000, $7,000, $8,000, $9,000, $10,000, $11,000, $12,000, $13,000, $14,000, $15,000, $16,000, $17,000, $18,000, $19,000, $20,000,
And some of you are like, oh, well, this, is, this isn't as exciting as I thought it was. Did you think just because I was his father that he just fucking knew how to do this on his own? Like he was born with this? No. He doesn't know hardly anything about it. And it, it's my excitement to bring him up through it. But you have to let failure do its role. The very thing I tell you not to be afraid of, that you're trying to avoid, I'm putting him in a position where he will feel that. Because once he feels it and that adversity of, okay, you think you know what you're doing, so show dad what you know. And he saw he was unable, like three minutes. And in fact, it was probably just a little bit under three minutes. He was squirming. He's like, why isn't it going up there? Well, I said, it is. It will. <laughs> you just have to relax. I told him where it was going to go. And I said, you buy it. In a down, when the next down candle, you buy it when you feel like it's time for you to push the button. But it has to be black. It has to be going down. I don't care how much from the time it starts turning black. In other words, when the candle's starting to go down and we're bullish and we're looking for a buy-side liquidity pull. I said, you're going to buy the next down close candle. Why? Because what I was putting him in is already the institutional order flow was bullish. And I'm teaching you that down close candles will support price if order flow is bullish. And I told him, I said, this area right here, it, that is a fair value gap. It can trade into that. I don't care where you buy it in there. I don't care. But when you buy it, your stop loss has to go at that low. As soon as you push the button, you put the order in that's going to be a, a sell stop right below that low. And then you just wait and you watch it. And he just... As soon as the candle turned black and it started as, as a, a down-closed candle was starting to form on the very next one in that candle, boy jumps in immediately. Wasn't even in the fair value gap. Didn't even trade into the fair value gap. And I said, is it in the fair value gap? Because now I'm afraid I'm going to miss it. What the fuck? <laughs> what are you talking about, miss it? You didn't even, it didn't even get into the fair value gap yet. What are you doing? The, the rules were this. It has to trade down into that little range. Once it does that, it's, it's the, the candle will be black. It's going down. It's a down-close candle forming. It has to drop down into that little barrier of high and low, that little segment that you understand listening to me as a student. That's a fair value gap. He can't spot them yet, and I'm teaching him. But he wants to do it pushing the button. Which is what? The equivalent of most of you out there, start trading live. There's no better way to learn than to get out there and trade with a live account. That's fucking bullshit. You have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> Just like he found out. Well, I asked him, I said, did it get into the fair value gap? He goes, I'm afraid it's going to move without me, Dad. I'm like, if it fucking moves without going down the fair value gap, who cares? Who cares if it does that? You missed it then. That's the whole point. Don't change the rules. Don't color outside the lines dad's putting for you. This is what you're supposed to be doing. When it goes into that area, once it drops down into it, as soon as it gets in it, I don't care when after it does that, but as long as that candle is black, it's down. As long as it's not above its opening price, you can buy that. But it must, it absolutely must trade in between these two lines, that fair value gap. Because what happens if it does it again? I said, then you can buy it again. He's only had one contract on. So can I do one more with this one still? I said, yes, you can do that. So it goes down. It touches the, the first, the high end line. It doesn't go into the fair value gap. It just touches it. What's he do? Waits. It goes down into it some more. Now it's just above consequent encroachment. I'm waiting for him. He's it's like, okay, now he's going to push the button. No, no, uh-uh. It goes back outside the fair value gap, goes above the opening price, and starts another candle that's green. It's starting to run higher. Then he buys it. I said, what did you just do? He goes, I bought another one. No shit. I, I see you did that, son. But why did you do that then? Because I saw it go down there like you said, but I wanted to see if it was going to go up after it went down there because I was afraid if I bought it down. I said, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? The fact that it went down there like you were expecting it to, the fact that I told you to buy it when it went in there, that was the rule. The rule was you do that. 
and you can't buy it after it goes above its opening price. What part of that didn't you understand? He goes, I understood it, but it makes sense more for me to see it go away from it. I said, but by doing that, do you understand that you just opened up more risk? What do you mean? I only bought one more. You bought another contract, yes, but the stop loss that you're utilizing is now further away from that entry. You've incurred more potential open risk. Do you understand that? No. You bought at a higher price than you should have. You paid too much money for it. And you're using a stop loss down at a low that makes sense for the structure on this chart. It's sound where it's at. It's not allowing for a lot of risk. It makes sense for the stop loss to be right where I told you to be. But now because you bought it above and it started running away, you bought it at an expensive price. You bought it at a premium. That's not what you do. You don't do that. So he didn't like the, the idea that he did that wrong. And I, he didn't like the fact that I was correcting him and telling him, you didn't listen. You did it wrong. And if this market were a trade that I'm not putting you in, this could be easily retracing back down to that stop loss if you don't know what you're doing. And you took a larger loss than you would have done if you followed the rules. Do you understand that? He goes, yeah, I understand. And of course, he's, he feels deflated and stuff. And I told him, I said, this is all part of this. And dad's going to correct you when you do shit wrong. But don't take it personal. I love you. I want to see you do well. But you have to listen. And don't feel bad because I have all these people around the world that most of the time these motherfuckers don't listen either. Okay? It's normal. I'm the same way. Don't do this. I'm going to do it a dozen times. <laughs> okay? It's normal. You're learning how hard this business is. In your mind, you want to feel like you're doing it the right way. When dad's telling you the right way, you don't have the experience of seeing it being the right way. You want to do your way. And your way is through ignorance. And you have no idea what the hell you're doing. So that part of it, well, well it was uncomfortable for him. And my obsessive compulsive fucking flipped out. And I kind of feel bad looking back at it now because I'm giving you a more tamer, like really dialed down because I, I zapped. I was like, what the fuck did you just do there? Why did you do that? Why did you just do that? Because I wanted to know it was going to go up. Because if it didn't go up from the fair value guy, if it would have kept going lower, I would have took a loss. That's exactly what's supposed to happen. If you're wrong, that's what you're paying the stop loss to do. That's exactly what it's there for, to limit your loss. Not say, okay, this is where I think I'm wrong. Let me buy it at a higher price so that way I can take more of an ass chewing when I'm wrong. That's what you are trying to avoid. That's the, the analyst is supposed to be kicking your ass right now, and I'm the analyst because you don't have the experience. I'm jumping your shit right now because you did exactly what I told you not to do. You did exactly what I told you not to do. I told you to buy it as soon as it gets in the fair value gap, and I gave you free reign to buy it any time inside that fair value gap. As long as the candle's down, it's black, and it's in between these two lines, you have the control. You're holding the wheel. You push the button. You buy it. As soon as it gets in there, it's on you. The stop loss is where I told you to put it at. Done. And what did you do? You waited for it to go down there. You waited for it to leave it. And then you waited for a new candle to open up, and it's running higher. And you bought that. That is chasing price. You buy and down close candles, son, all the time. If you do that, that will save your ass more times than it will hurt you. You'll, you'll do it wrong sometimes, and it'll still go lower and hit your stop loss. But by far and large, that will save your ass. You do not, you do not buy a fucking candle after a fair value gap and an expansion begins. You don't do that. Because... It can retrace and do what? Go right back into that fair value gap deeper, completely close it in, or go to your stop, and you've incurred larger loss than is necessary. So for some of you that think that, oh, man, I wish I was his son. Man, it's, it's, it would be so awesome. No, you have no idea. <laughs> I'm like a fucking drill sergeant because this, is, this shit matters to me. And if you're going to do it and you're going to train with me, you're going to be fucking told this is the wrong fucking way to do it. 
and you're doing it wrong. And you're going to be told that you're doing it wrong. And you need to understand it's uncomfortable to do that wrong. Otherwise, if I just let him feel like, well, that's good. Explore yourself, son. You know, sow your oats. Go out there and find yourself in the, in the chaos of price action. And figure, figure it out on your own. <laughs> Forget it. There's rules. There's rules of engagement. And I know, I know he has about a 95 chance, about 95% chance of probability. Unless I literally put him in the trades and guide him on every single one of them, he's going to shit the bed on this. And I'm comfortable letting him do it. I could sit here and let him do this and the public know nothing about it. But I want you to know this is what it's like. You'll learn from it. He's going to learn from it. What I suspect is going to happen is his first losing trade. He's going to say, Dad, can you help me? To which I will say, help you how? I'm going to remind you of the rules. I'll sit with you and tell you what you're about to do. Is it inside the rules I gave you? I'll tell you where it's going to go as a draw on liquidity. But your entry, you are afraid. And I can't make you overcome that until you do it. You do it. After we were done and we were having something to eat in the afternoon on uh, Friday, he says to me, he goes, Dad, are you upset with me? I said, nope, I'm not upset at all. The trade's done. It's over. You're my son. I love you. But you're going to have to learn to follow the rules because when you mess up, Dad's going to jump your shit like that because it matters. You have to have a, a response that you remember. Oh, shit, that was not comfortable because you're not feeling any monetary loss right now. So the only thing you're feeling is you did not follow the rules. Yes. It didn't take anything out of your pocket. No. But dad jumped your ass. So that's that emotional response to not following the rules. There's nothing wrong with that. You got taken to the woodshed. I take my students to the woodshed all the time. I jumped your I jump all your asses all the time because I love all of you. I want to see you do well. If I sit back and let you do this dumb shit all the time, figure it out on your own dumb shit. Push a button in a live account. Learn how to trade with a live account. Fucking dumb shit. You're going to fail. You're, all you're doing is guaranteeing you're going to fail. So I told him, I said, listen, let's go, over, let's go back over your rules. Okay? Let's consider what it is that we're, we're trying to build in you. Okay? So how to pass the $50,000 funded account challenge. There's a company out there that offers this threshold for funding. Um, you're not getting fifty thousand dollars. You're not. You're not getting that. Okay. And they have a cost of one of them is one hundred and sixty-five dollars. And I guess if it's tax, then I don't know if they use the local tax rate or whatever. But we'll just say it's Maryland tax and six percent. And this call it around the number of one hundred and seventy-five dollars. Okay. So it's going to cost you out of pocket one hundred and seventy-five bucks. The profit target on the fifty thousand dollars is six percent which is $3,000, which is Mickey Mouse shit. Anybody can find that in the, over the course of four weeks. Now, notice I said four weeks. Just because they say you have to have a minimum of five days profitable trading before you can get fun, you, your first payout, that is not an invitation like most of you are seeing it as, okay, it's a, it's a short little race. We got to do it in five days. Everything has to be completed in five days. Who said that? That's why I was very specific about asking, is there a threshold for time? You have to have it met. You have to get your profit target by this amount of trading days before the end of the month or in a week or in 10 days or something to that effect. And you don't need a lot of time to do this, by the way, but the – Profit target is 6% of the $50,000 or $3,000. They offer you and tell you that you can trade up to five contracts. Scratch that shit the fuck off, okay? Don't even think about that. That's absolute lunacy. Don't even touch that. Don't do that, okay? I can go in there and do that, but that's not the same as you. You want to use one contract because this is all about getting bread and butter Secondary source of income. That's what you want to try to do, right? 
Because if this is Lambo fucking lifestyle, okay, 4X lifestyle or whatever the hell these guys are with the three cheap-ass laptops on, on YouTube, <laughs> if you think that that's the way you want to go in life, that's fine. Go ahead and chase that. What I'm trying to do is give you the working class hero approach because that's how you're starting right now. Most of you don't know what you're doing. And I'm not trying to promise or entice you into thinking you're going to get rich. That's always a possibility if you push it. But nobody's promising you that here. If you can make your car note, if you can make your rent payment, your mortgage payment, or a large percentage of it, you know, you're, you're winning. And, and don't let anybody tell you you're not. Because if you don't have it in your pocket every month right now and you can find that through this, what do you call winning? Because I think that's a win. The max loss they tell you is 2%, which is $1,000. And the maximum ruin, we'll call it that way, uh, 4%. So if you shit the bed $2,000, you, you pretty much failed the, the whole thing. That's my interpretation of it. It might not be that finite. But that's what I'm going to talk with here because that's the rules I you know, basically framed it with him, him being my son, Cameron. So let me ask you a question. If the daily max loss is $1,000 and you're trading one mini contract, one mini, that means every full handle move, every four ticks is a $50 price fluctuation in terms of profit and loss for you. How many handles can you take as a loss in one day with 2% or $1,000? 20. Have you ever fucking seen me ever outline a trade that has a 20 handle stop loss? No. Nope. I'm teaching you how to engage with a one-minute chart. Five handles is a very nice, safe, round number where most of your stops will be less than that. They'll be less than that. But don't be afraid if it is a five-handle stop loss. Now, there's a lot of uh, snobbery with these new folks that are coming into the trading industry. Yeah, it's got to be an ultra-small small stop loss, or it's just not civilized. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Listen, a stop is relative to the market structure that it's framing the setup in. So to have this idea that you always have to use a two-pip stop loss or a two-handle stop loss, get that shit out of your mind right now because you are painting yourself into a box. You don't realize it, but you're saying that you can only see this market with those parameters only. You've got to be flexible. Especially if you're going to be pyramiding. Pyramiding is going to have to be flexible in terms of how much of a movement can you absorb. And if you have just five or two, or you, you're not going to be able to do pyramiding effectively. The numbers will start messing with you. You can't calculate that fast when you're using lower time frames. Like it's just so many things to juggle. So everything I'm teaching you here today, no pyramiding. Straight one shots, okay? So we're not talking about doing five contracts. We're not doing four. We're not doing three. We're not doing two. We're doing one. One measly ass contract. One contract that makes or loses $50 per handle fluctuation. Let me ask you a question. What, um, what's more likely to be seen intraday in price action for the ES S&P futures? 20 handles. multiple times or five handles clearly five handles right but something happens when we start messing with what we considered live trading or not that the not that this is even live trading because this is the evaluation part like you got to get through this to get to the part of where you now make the trades that split the profits with this company whatever company that might be you feel like you got to do more. You get into the trade. It starts moving for you. And you're thinking, oh, shit. This might be one of those 30-handle runs. And you don't take your five handles and get out like you're supposed to, like the rules fucking say you're supposed to. 
and you have a Cameron experience where you just fuck around and find out. You don't want to do that. If you're going to do this, you run it like a business. And you take advantage of these opportunities while these companies are being permitted to exist. Because they might not be here two years from now, three years from now, whatever. Regulation can come in and say, it's time to shut this show down. So you, if you're going to do it, do it the right way. So what we're looking for is one contract. You're trading one contract, and guess what that does? That eliminates 90% of all of the ass puckering that you're going to feel when you put the trade on. It's not going to be immediately up and down $300, $500, $600, $700, and you're freaking out because you're over leveraging. How fast are you going to get to that $1,000 daily loss if you're trading five contracts? Four handles. That's it. Then the ES takes a walk up your strata chocolata. You're fucked. One contract, folks. One does this. I showed you with one contract using an industry standard shit broker, shit platform, thinkorswim, I doubled the account with one contract. With losses, 100% return, five weeks. Daily sign-in, showed you the statements, the whole business, okay? So this is 6%. When I first started teaching on Baby Pips, I told everybody to do that. Aim for 6% a month, and it'll double your equity every single year. No matter what the equity balance is at the beginning, 6% is compounded over the course of a month, every single month becomes a 100% return at the end of the year. Now, some of you are thinking, well, shit, that's doubling a $50,000 account. I could really use that. Right. Right. But most of you are saying, that's not enough. Okay. Let's go back to square one. How much are you making right now from your trading? Oh, shit. We don't want to have that kind of conversation, right? <laughs> Come on now, ICT shit. Don't be reminding me about that stuff. That's why I'm here after all. Right. That's exactly why you're here. They learn how to make fucking money. So stop thinking about money ass backwards. You're trying to jump ahead to Olympic level returns. $15,000 withdrawals. I've got a five-figure first withdrawal. How about just doing $1,000 and being fucking happy with the fact that you got your groceries paid for and maybe some of your electric bill and feeling the ease of that coming off your back and thinking, I didn't have to do very much to get that. Man, this, this isn't as hard as I was making that to be. That's the right way of going into this. But nobody writes fucking books like that. Nobody makes videos on YouTube but me like that. This is the real world shit. This is, this is how you master money. You don't walk out there thinking you're going to be rich real quick because it will show you that is not happening. So we understand that there's more likely to see very easy, repetitive deliveries of five-handle price runs. The market's going up and down all day long. Here's, I'm, here, I'm going to make you a guarantee. Ready? Check this out. On Tuesday, E-mini S&P is going to move 250 fucking handles. What the fuck did you just say? Yeah. It's going to move 412 fucking handles on Tuesday. You want to bet me? Who wants to take that bet? If I put you on a 15-second chart and you buy every sh short-term high and you sell every short-term low, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and that shit con continuously builds up against you, Back and forth, ebb and flow, all day long. Because the market's not going sideways. It's not going straight up. It's not going straight down. It's going up and down, up and down. And if you're wrong on every one of those swing highs and swing lows, and you keep getting burned, and you have enough margin to weather it, 
count how many times that market's going up and down from handles. It's going to move a lot. But you don't look at it that way until you blow your account. And you're thinking, shit, the range on the day was only, shit, it was only 17 handles. But this son of a bitch went up and down, up and down, up and down all day long. Over 100 or 200 handles, the equivalent. And you got proof of it because you shit yourself in your account, buying and selling at all the wrong times. I discovered that in the 90s when the average daily range for the S&P was three and a half handles. <laughs> yeah, how about that? So five handles a day is where we're still aiming for. One for one is still good. If you risk two and a half handles to get your five, all the better. Stop listening to people that want to use book smarts, okay? Book smarts, mathematic text, statistical probability bullshit, okay? All that nonsense, calculus. <laughs> they want to bring calculus and trigonometry and all this other horse shit into trading. Geometry, no fucking place in, in trading, okay? It has nothing to do with it. You can make money trading one-to-one. -one. The problem is you're using stupid shit from books and retail logic that has no real reason why the market's going to cause it to go up or down. I'm telling you what makes the markets go up and down. I'm proving it every single day. I'm telling you every fucking minute candle where it's going to go, where it's not going to go. It's going to do this, it's going to do that. What makes more sense, what you've seen and witnessed live with me or the nonsense that you've lost money trying to trade in those books and those courses and those other shit you see on YouTube? Think about it. That's all I'm asking. You absolutely can make money with one-to-one. -one. You can risk five to get five. Why? How can you trust that? You need to have three-to-one because the losing trades – are going to eat up your wins. Yeah, if you fucking suck. If you suck as a trader, that's you're you're damn right it's going to be just like that. You're you're going to fucking lose your ass if you do that. But I'm teaching you how to read price action when it's most likely going to move higher, when it's most likely going to move lower, when it's going to be shitting itself sideways consolidation. Are you paying attention? Are you paying attention that you're learning how to read and navigate the terrain? We know when it's likely to be moving higher. We know when it's likely to move sideways and be fucking ugly. Yes, there's opportunities to trade in that. But why the hell do you want to do that? Why would you want to, why would you want to risk your business that you're starting on a shoestring budget, these funded account challenges? Why are you going to risk it? In those types of conditions, when I'm teaching you, this is what it's like. And then here, when we're not in those conditions, you can make all the entirety of your weekly objective on one good day. If you just simply fucking wait. Wait for it. But if you can't, because of circumstances in life, your, your schedule, the market that you're trading, maybe isn't moving. Okay, no problem. You adapt. I'm going to give you a couple of different approaches to do this. And you allow the market to dictate how you're going to engage. But you're going in with one shot, one kill always. That's your first model of choice. You're looking for it. You're risking no more than five handles. The easy one-to-one -one bread to butter setup that gets you your ends it's five for five. Risk for five. Take your five. Move to the sidelines. Do not be afraid because it's not two to one, three to one. Oh, your losing trades are going to eat up all your winning trades. We're not following a logic that goes out there and just rolls the dice 15 fucking times in an hour. I don't trade that way. I'm not teaching you anything like that. You're looking for a very specific thing. To occur in price around a specific time window. That's very organized. That's not sporadic. That's not a condition that causes a gambler 
to have free reign. There's rules. And you engage with these rules within this time window. If you're outside the time window, you can't do shit. You're not allowed. The casino is not open for business right now. Sit your ass outside and wait. That's not how it is in the real world. But you have to operate this business like it is, just like that. You're not sitting here fucking around in the Asian session. Well, i got to get my five points in Asia. Could you? Yeah. Is it likely? Probably not. Odds are better in London, in New York, morning session or afternoon session. There's your three time windows. Which one fits for you? Well, none of them, ICT. Well, you're going to make some changes in your life, aren't you? That's not the answer you want to hear, but that's the answer you need. But I can't. Then you can't. There's, there's nothing I got for you. There's other things that you can trade and use, but I'm telling you, this is, this is the thing you want to hear deep down inside as much as you might not want to hear it now. This is the shit that works. This is the things that repeat. And if you have to make an alignment with your personal schedule, your work, your family life, you're going to have to make changes. So you can look to a 20-handle move before it wipes you out. We're never taking on that much risk in a trade. One contract is never going to – you're never going to have drawdown in a trade that is expected to move 20 handles against you. Five is the maximum, and we're going to be looking for less than that. Now, think about how we can take this goal of $3,000 versus 6% on that account. How can we chew that elephant up? Okay, Obviously – Everybody goes out there and tries to do, I want to pass my funded account challenge in a day or two or you know, in a couple of days. Why? You've already admitted, if you're being honest, that you don't know what the hell you're doing. You're, you're just now coming into this. You're learning. Oh, but I could afford to do a reset. Why would you even want to do that? Nobody starts a business and says, you know what? It cost me $80,000 to get all the advertising done and get all this shit stocked up and all the flyers and other things and pay the advertising agencies to do their thing. And, uh, you know, if, if we run ads at a bad time, you know, when nobody's really being blind some TV, you know, everybody's asleep during that time, you know, fuck it. You know, we can, we can afford to do it again. Nobody does that. But everybody does that shit in trading. <laughs> That's how they run their business. And they wonder why everybody goes tits up and they can't make any money in this business because you're doing everything backwards. But it feels natural. It feels natural to do it that way because you've not had proper guidance or you haven't felt the pain of doing it incorrectly like that and then learning by experience. This isn't the right way of doing it. And then you do what? You go out looking for somebody who knows how to do it, and nobody knows how to fucking do it. They're all telling you the same shit, risk 2%. Push your edge. Take every fucking trade, and you know, don't lower your exposure when you take a loss. It's all the, it's all the bullshit. There's a way to do this, and there's lots of other ways not to do it. So we're looking for a move in the morning. You can add the London session if you're willing to trade in that. We'll talk about London Oxy. Throughout the year, I'll sit up with you a couple times in London, and we'll, we'll do some live sessions in London. But the morning session, you're looking for a five-handle run, and you're looking for a five-handle run in the afternoon. You start the week looking for your goal for that particular week. So we have $3,000. Okay, that's our, that's our threshold. We are not trying to do it all in five days. You have to trade a minimum five days. Or you get your first payout or whatever it is that you're trying to you know, pass the evaluation or whatever. You have time. Use all the time that it gives you because that way you'll do what? You'll be more selective in the market day that you're trading in. Not, well, I got five days to get this done, and there's a whole shit ton of fucking market reports that are due, and I have no idea what's going to happen. CPI's due out, and you know we got FOMC and Fed chairman's talking. Well, I hope everything works out in my favor. 
What the hell? Really? You want to filter out all of the disadvantages. Some of you are starting these challenges on the week of non-farm payroll. And I'm telling you not to do it, and you don't listen, and you're emailing me. Man, I wish I would have listened to you. I wish you would have listened fucking too, okay? I wish I, I wish I would have been listened to and had these instructions drilled into your head so I wouldn't have to do these types of discussions within a good, simple five-minute talk. But a lot of you don't listen, and you need this. And for folks that don't think they need it, you haven't done it yet, and you'll know exactly what it feels like. And you'll be thinking, shit, I wish I would have listened. But you won't send me an email because you know you're bitching me out right now while I'm talking to you because you think you know better. And you'll find out that you don't know shit and you got there and you try it. So typically, like I said, five handles or less is where our stop's going to be. We're, we're aiming for five. But when we start our analysis, we're going to be looking for the days that potentially offer enough range to do what? We have four weeks typically every month. You have 30 days to get your objective. Just like you have to work your entire fucking month to get your monthly ends. Some of you can't even get your ends over the course of four weeks. But everybody does what? They take that first big bill. It's due at the beginning of the month, your rent, your mortgage, or whatever. Your first paycheck or two goes where? To that. And then the next big bill that's due in the order of the month, calendar days, Okay, I gotta have my money for this bill. Got so you're doing this already. So if you're kicking and screaming, saying I ain't doing this, take a look at what you're doing right now with your bills. It's the same thing. This is this is the brass tacks of this stuff. You're you're already doing these things in life. You take what you have to pay over the course of the month, and you break it down because you're not getting all your money to cover your entire monthly expenses in one paycheck. If you are, then you're really blessed. But most people aren't. So you have a $3,000 profit target. Okay. Four weeks. Divide that up. That means in each week you have to make $750. Easy. That's fucking easy. You need to talk to yourself right now. $750. Trading one contract in the E-mini. Say it out loud. $750,000 U.S. dollars. Trading one contract in the E-mini S&P is fucking easy. It's easy. Absolutely easy as shit. That's only 15 handles. You've seen me do that sometimes in scalps. Teaching what I'm teaching you. Now, you don't need to do that. You might ha have the skill set to do that yet. That's okay. That's absolutely fine. You'll get there. But you have five days. Ready? Listen. <laughs> 15 handles over the course of a week. You're obviously looking for an ideal day that presents the opportunity for that one run of 15 handles and you're done. Then you can relax the rest of that week. You don't have to do anything more. Don't think, well, let me get the rest of the month out of the way because I got time. I did it early. No, no. What you're doing by doing that is Showing that you have no trust or faith in the things that I'm teaching that repeat every fucking day. I'm not worried about, oh, it's going to stop working tomorrow. I better get all my money today. I know it's going to work next week. It's going to work in January next year. It's going to work in August. It's going to work in September. As long as the markets are open, this shit's going to work. That's confidence. Sounds like arrogance to a new viewer or listener. It's confidence. I've been here around the block multiple times. This shit just repeats over and over and over again. So you want one trade idea that you're aiming for, and you might not get it. You know, may not be successful in this regard, but you're looking for one setup that offers that full run of 15 handles. One day that's going to have a medium or high impact news driver, a shift in market structure that gives you the model 2022 that I taught last year on my YouTube channel. Trade up into a fair value gap if you're bearish and reach for 15 handles if it offers it on a 15-minute candlestick chart. That's how you aim for it. Easy to see it that way, 15-minute chart. 
if you can't do that type of trade and if it's outside your scope of aptitude and prowess, you take the 15 handles for the entirety of the week. And remember, this is easy stuff. I know some of you, you know, these rock stars out there that have YouTube channels, they're laughing, saying, oh, 15 handles, everybody can, everybody can do that, everybody can do that. Yeah, it, a lot of you can't. I'm giving you a, a, an approach. My son Cameron can't do it. He's just starting. He can't do it. So I'm going to teach him to do these steps here. Those 15 handles divided over three days, three trading days out of the five over the course of the week, all he has to do is find three five-handle runs. And there's just 15 handles. There's just 750 bucks. The pressure is not being placed on you. You're removing all that pressure. You got to perform. You got to do it quick. Social media is fucking expecting you to do it quick. Fuck social media. Fuck Twitter. Fuck Instagram. Fuck YouTube. Fuck Discord. Fuck the trolls. They're not paying you. If you get it right, they're not paying you. If you get it wrong, they're going to laugh at you. Who gives a fuck? Stop letting them know about what you're doing. Three shades, five handles each. There's your 15 handles for the week. Once you get it, you fucking stop. You turn it off. Then you can go watch Netflix. Then you can go to the fucking sports channels. Then you can go to the fucking pub and hang out with your fucking boys. Bake fucking cookies with your girlfriends. Whatever the fuck you do like my wife does. 15 handles over two days or two trade setups at seven and a half handles each. There's your 15 handles. Two trades or two days, one trade in each day. Now, remember, I've already talked and taught you that you can trade in the morning session. Then you can trade in the afternoon session. For some of you that want to do the reversals, you can use the lunch hour to run on the stops. There's really three really good setups each day between 8.30 and 4 o'clock. But if you're going to use a one-minute chart, there's a whole shit ton of five-minute runs or five-handle handle, I'm sorry, five handle runs in a one-minute chart. Shit, they're all over the place. Lots of them. You can't see them yet live, just like Cameron can't see them live. That's fine. But once you learn what I'm teaching you this year, you will walk through this challenge like it's nothing. It's easy shit. What makes it difficult is they give you the rope to hang yourself with it. They're giving you permission to do something that you shouldn't do. Trade up to five contracts. You're going to fucking lose. You're going to lose. You shouldn't have a drawdown of 2%. You don't want to risk a whole lot. You don't want to have a, a $1,000 drawdown on the day. You don't want that. You want it about $300, give or take, you know, $350, $300. That's about average. Oh, it's too much. I'm scared. How much have you lost trying to learn how to trade with a live account? How many times did you reset that? By putting more money into it. I'm not a fan of these things. These funded account things. I, I, I don't have an affinity for it. But I know it's a resource that's being made available right now. So it would be foolish of me not to at least outline how if I was being told this is the only way I could do it and start all over again, this is what I would do. Now, clearly, I can trade more handles than 15 a week. But putting you in that situation like if I lost everything, obviously I'd be all fucked up, right? I'd be nervous. I'd be depressed. You know, I'd feel hardship because I don't feel that now. And I had to start all over again. You know, maybe if I was living in a, a studio apartment crammed up in there with my wife and my youngest son. And I got two dogs and everything's piling up on me. I'm scared because, you know, what does my family think is going to happen next? You know, I'm trying to put your, put myself in a situation where, because I can't, it's hard to do that now. I can remember how it was for me, but I can't, I can't really say exactly how it's going to be, but I'm trying to paint the picture that would be equivalent to what your situation is right now. You're having a hard time making your ends meet. You want to do better. Okay. So this is one medium that you can use right now while it's available. This is how you would do it. 
There's 15 handles divided up over five days. Listen to this shit. Every day. This is how I teach my son. This is how I was teaching him on Friday. He has to get over the fear of taking a trade. He's afraid. Friday was a, a manifestation of that right in front of me. And I even told him where to buy. And he was afraid. He didn't do exactly what I told him to do. And it wasn't even real money. And he was afraid of the outcome being what? Incorrect. He wants to be rewarded with correctness. Fuck correctness. It's profitability and managing risk. Preserving capital is the number one goal. Every day, Monday through Friday, how many times does the market move three handles? <laughs> Let me say it again. How many times throughout the course of the day does the E-mini S&P move three handles? All fucking day long. All day long. What happens if you see a move that's already started? Okay. Because I'm going to put your asses through this. In the next four weeks, you're going to be doing a lot of this. The price run is running for a buy side liquidity pool. Premium. Something premium above market price. So we're expecting price to go, go higher. Okay. It rallies away. And it dips down into a fair value gap. We can frame the trade risking five handles. I'm going to tell you to do what I told my son to do on Friday. When it enters that fair value gap, I want you to push your demo button to take that demo trade. And as soon as it moves three handles on a limit, you're going to exit. What did he just say? This guy just said, risk five handles to make three. Yes, because I want you to see how often that can happen. You need to stop this myth of risk to reward ratio. Only works if it does this. That's horse shit. What works is price delivery. You're not going to blow out if you take a full five handle loss. But if you're scared to take trades, this is how I beat it. I got in, I had a little bit of a move, and I got out. I got into a trade, had a little bit of a move, and I got out. And I saw I, it didn't hurt me. It didn't go to my stop. Okay, let me go one more point higher, one more tick more in the bond market because I was learning it here in the bond market doing these types of things. I was afraid of the speed of the bond market. It wasn't really moving a whole lot back then, but it felt like it was speed. Today, if you compared – if you could go back in time and literally watch price deliver how it was in the S&P in the 90s, you wouldn't want to trade it. Three and a half handles, four handles, is a, is a, that's a good day. That was a good day. You're spoiled, rotten right now. But these 100 fucking handle days, 50 handle days, 30 handle days, and it's the average daily range. Lots of opportunity. You're spoiled. You have no idea what it was like for us. And before that, when it was a very small, small range in the 80s before I even was trading. The S&P was down in the hundreds, didn't even cross the thousand threshold. And we're trading in four thousands. And the ranges are wider. Trading like this, folks, teaching yourself to overcome the fear of getting get, that's what it does by default. It lowers your expectation and removes the uncertainty of what happens when the market compresses into very, very low volatility because that could happen too. Who says it's never going to go back to those low thresholds of volatility where we're having four-handle daily ranges in the S&P market? I know it sounds like it can't happen right now, but I can tell you right now, there was not a day back in the 90s where I thought we would see 100-handle daily ranges. I couldn't fathom that. It was completely unrealistic at the time. But here I am as a 50-year-old, I'm seeing it. And some of you guys that are 20 years old, and you, know, you weren't even alive when I first started trading. 
you think that you know everything because of what you experience right now. And you would never fucking survive in an environment like how we cut our teeth back in the 90s and 80s and before me. Where the handle movements for the entire daily range was less than a stop loss on a trade idea that I'm teaching you with this model. So if you learn how to trade like this, overcoming fear of getting in, guess what it also does? It teaches you how to trade in very, very low volatility, and you'll always find fresh bread. You'll always find a way to make ends meet. You don't need big moves. We prefer it, but you don't need it. You don't need it. And every time Dick and Harry it's out there selling courses and shit, they're trying to teach you these 500 R multiple fucking setups that you got to do this or you're really not succeeding. That's horse shit. It's horse shit. They're not getting those. They're scaling out. They're getting out early. So those R multiples are not even real. They're implied. But you don't need those big moves. You don't need that. It's about making money. What if you made an extra $150 a day? You're walking down the street, you see $150. Every time you pass this corner on a the step, there's three $50 bills sitting there under a rock. You keep coming back, you find, are you going to walk by there one day, the sixth or seventh time, and say, you know what, fuck that, I'm not picking that up. I'm sick and tired of seeing that $150 every day. Fuck no, you're not going to complain about that. You're going to keep doing it. So why aren't you doing that with your trading? It's just three handles. Just three handles. It's happening all day long. You're not thinking about it. Well, how can you do it? The market goes down into a fair value gap. It expands and trades higher. Okay? It moves away. It's not reached your buy side liquidity pool yet. It's not reached your premium fair value gap that you think is the draw on liquidity. It's going to go higher. Keep reaching, pressing higher. Nothing's indicating it's going to go lower. you got plenty of time. It's still early in the session. We're not even in the last hour before lunch. We're still in the 10 to 10.30 window New York local time and the market trades down into a bullish order block well guess what you can do use that order block to buy five handle stop loss three handle limit do that five times there's your 15 handles and guess what you're in and out of that probably many times in less than a minute or two that's high frequency trading that's all these high-frequency algorithms do. See, you think it's, oh, it's, it's stupid. Oh, it's dumb. Look, you're risking more than you're making. You're making more trades that way than you're going to find tr trading with 3 to 1, 5 to 1, 10 to 1, 21. You think the designers and coders of these algorithms that are taking those types of moves all day fucking long, up and down in the marketplace, you think they're sitting around and wondering and worrying, is there – Risk the reward model matching up with what every retail trader thinks it should be. When every fucking retail trader out there is working a fucking job, changing fucking oil at Jiffy Lube, and they're going to worry about the fucking opinions of risk to reward over the guy that's changing the oil or lying and saying he did and ripping the people off. Come on, man. Seriously. <laughs> All you got to do is that. That's the minimum. That's the easy shit. I'm going to point those things out this week live, and I'll show you what high-frequency trading, where they move in and where they move out, you'll see it. Those, t those little tiny little fluctuations, they in themselves can replace your job, and you don't need to have a full run. You don't have to even get to a buy-side liquidity pool or a sell-side liquidity pool. Three points of fluctuation. That's happening all the time. You can find that on a 15-second chart literally every 15 minutes. <laughs> Don't believe me? Go in here and look for it. It's there all the time. You think these high-frequency algorithms are sitting around in park all day long waiting for a specific time of the day? Fuck no. They're in there constantly chipping away, boom, 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 boom firing in between all these micro-fluctuations. And they're making billions. It all adds up. And all you're worrying about right now is making one of your ends meet. $50,000 account. Doing this, you get good at it, right? Okay. 
you start making a little bit of scratch. So, okay, now I want to double this up. I want to build up from this and I go to what? What's the next threshold? You can go to another $50,000 account. So that way you're managing you know, the equivalent of a hundred thousand plan. It's not a hundred thousand dollars and you're going to do the same thing, but you're just going to do it single contract in one single contract in another. You're not increasing the risk. You're not parlaying the number of contracts because now you're experienced. So let me just take on more risk. No, it's one contract. One. I made $25,000 with one contract with lots of losses that I didn't need to take. Can you live on $25,000 a month? I'm being sincere, folks. I'm not trying to be arrogant. I'm not trying to be a prick. How hard would it be for you to live with $25,000 trading with one contract over the course of, say, five and a half weeks? That's a, that's a pretty good cushion, isn't it? Now, what if you did that seven months out of the year? One contract. That's pretty good, isn't it? You're not expected to trade every single month. You're not expected to trade every single day. That's what I'm going to teach you this year. I'm going to teach you how you can lose correctly, and it, it doesn't bother you. It won't hurt you. It will not hurt you. I'm going to put you in laboratory experiments with your demo that I know you're going to get it wrong because I want you to see what it's like to get it back and not be fearful of it. All these things that you're placing on top of yourself, just like my son, he wants to impress daddy. He wants to impress inner circle trader because in his mind, he thinks that everybody can see him because we're looking at that chart. That's why I was holding my phone up and recording the screen. My, my screens, my trade station is not linked to the same ISP address. I don't email from that. I don't go to social media. I don't do shit, but just tap into my charts. That's it. Nothing is piping into that ISP address. Nothing. It's not in my name. It ain't going to be hacked. Now, the one I'm using on my laptop, you can go in there and look at fucking stupid shit I have on playlists and song lists. That's all you're going to see on there. There's nothing in that. And now I've had my shit hacked before. I've literally watched my mouse move around. And they were trying to go in my folders and my files and shit. And I had to just turn the fucking thing off. My forum was hacked. My Gmail was hacked. It, it's, it's happened before. But nothing links me to the shit that I'm doing when I'm using my live charts and data and brokers. It's not happening. But my son sees that and he thinks that we're live streaming. No, we're not. And he was nervous. That's why when you saw me recording the screen, I was right up on my far right lower right-hand corner monitor. And I was zoomed in, showing you the fluctuations, not the ladder, not the depth of market. That was shit. I was just showing you where we were on Friday, showing you that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that it, they'll say, you know, look what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. Look at this. Look at that. Okay. I teach in a demo. I teach in a paper trading account. This, uh, I think it's called Trade of Eight. Trade of Eight. I don't know if that's pronounced right like that, but I think if you know what I'm talking about, then you, you know what I'm trying to say. I use that platform on Friday, and that's the results of something like that too. So it's not like it only works cherry picked in hindsight over here, or it only worked in MT4. It's work, it works in everything. As long as I can see the chart and I know what time it is, it's going to repeat. But I was recording the screen, and that made him nervous. And he was wanting to take someone off the trade because he thought that I was recording him and showing the world what he was doing on the chart, where he was, and he wanted to do something. He wanted to close some of the trade so that way it looked like he did something right. And I'm correct. I said, no, 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 don't do that. And he wanted to move the stop. Don't do that. Do everything I just told you to do. Just relax. Let it happen. And that's exactly what some of you, most of you, feel when you're practicing. Because you see me do something, you hear my voice, 
because you see something that you recognize that I've talked about in live price action, and you're going to have more of that because of these live sessions that we're doing. And because of that experience, you're going to identify something that you remember. Oh, yeah, this is just like what he said. When it does this, it should do that. And when you see that happening in your own charts and I'm not there talking, it's just you know by experience this is what you should have expected. And it happens. Your confidence level goes through the fucking roof. You will be so confident, not overconfident. You'll know what you're looking for. You won't be fearful of this shit stopping You won't be fearful. They're going to change the algorithm because I'm not changing shit. It's going to continuously keep working. As long as there's a market, it's going to keep working. Price is always going to have an open, a high, and a low, and a close. It's going to have it. It's going to be there, folks. I promise you. As long as the sun rises up and the market's open, we're going to see this shit repeating. Some days are going to be more violent, a lot more movement. And other days will be shitty and choppy, and you're going to lose money. Guess what? That's a one-day event. Tomorrow, the sun's going to rise. The markets will open up, and you're going to go in there and doing the same shit that you do every other time. You're looking for the same repeating phenomenon because it's going to be there. What I just outlined is the bottom of the barrel approach to just getting in there and finding money. It's not highly sophisticated. It's just simple numbers and math. Now, the difference is it's plugging in what you understand where these opportunities and price fluctuations occur and exist in price. One-minute charts. They're there. They repeat over and over. How many times did you watch in the last two weeks of live streams with me? I said, okay, look at this right here. It's going to run here to here. There's a five-handle run right there. Oh, oh, right here. Watch this. It's going to expand up here. That's another five-handle run. Screenshot that. That's five handles. All day long, folks, clockwork, just going in there, chipping away at it. Every day it's moving. Every single day it's presenting these opportunities. But it might not be your opportunity. That's fine. But I'm taking you to the lowest threshold of what would be required for you to find something. And then now, obviously, even using a skill set that helps you and would help me overcome fear of getting into a trade. How do you overcome the fear? I'm afraid I'm going to get it wrong. I'm afraid it's going to move against me. How do, I, how do I just get over that fear? You push a button. In a demo, you push the button. And as soon as it gives you a very small fluctuation, which for me was three ticks in the bond market. $31 and change, every little tick. It was less than 100 bucks, but as soon as I got it, I closed it, and I sat back, and I said, okay, now now what happens? It would have ran for me. What the hell? How many times do I keep doing this? And you run a log. I did this trade here. It took this much time for me to get those three ticks. In this case, how much time does it take for you to get those three handles? Yes, you're going to use a five-handle stop loss. Don't fucking worry about that. You're teaching yourself how to overcome fear. How do I overcome? How do you know ICT? Because I've desensitized myself. How did I do that? By what I'm telling you to do here. You sit down and you have these little laboratory experiments with a one-minute chart. Every time it does something, it's running to a – I'm already telling you where it's going. I'm making that public. I'm telling you. Look here. It's going to the buy side. This is where it's going to go. We're looking for it to go there. Okay. Oh, it's going down to the sell side. This is where we're going to next. Okay. From that moment there, start looking. For any opportunity for you to practice like I'm telling you here, and you will conquer your fear of getting in. There's going to be times where it runs to where your stop loss would be. Okay, that's no problem. How much time did it do that from the time you entered? What did you miss now that's in hindsight? What, did it give you any kind of insight that you should have keyed up on? Don't be afraid to go in and look at that. That's where you're going to learn. But you're going to see when you get into these types of movements – Many times, it's almost immediate. It runs right for your three handles, and then there it is. Your limit order will close. It cancels your stop loss, and then you're out. That would be the equivalent of $150. How much time did it take? you got to be mindful of how much time these experiments take for them to deliver to your stop loss or to get your, your limit. 
And then once you do about 50 of them, go for four handles. Do 50 of them. How much time are you doing it? What was the, the success rate? You'll see by doing it, it's not a big deal. You won't be so fearful of it. And then you go to what? Five for five. Risk five for five. And then keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. And when you're consistently able to do that for three months in a demo, only, and that's the minimum, only then you're ready for this. Then you're ready for that funded account bullshit. Because until that happens, you're going to fail this. I'm going to say it again. Until you're consistently able to do this three months in a demo, consistently, no fear, you don't care about the outcome, you do these funded account challenges. I don't give a fuck what company it is. I don't care what terms they give you, how much they can fucking promise to do this and do that. It may be cheaper than the other ones. You're going to fucking fail it. It's, it's a promise. You're going to fail it. You're not equipped. You're trying to learn in a setting where you're placing so much emphasis on the outcome being positive only. And fearful if you fail. Folks, listen, you need Mark Douglas to come back from the fucking grave to tell you this is stupid. Okay? Nobody, nobody goes into trading with these types of scenarios expecting perfection and success rate from the ground, just hitting the ground running. It doesn't work like that. That's stupidity. Anyone that does that, that's stupid. And guess what? I tried that. <laughs> that's exactly what I did in 1992. So I'm not, I'm, I'm, I know by personal experience, it's the stupidest shit you can ever do. And when someone tells you, as nice, as nice as they may be, as many followers as they have on their social media accounts, as much as they say they make money, I don't give a fine fuck. If they tell you to try to learn how to trade, and you don't know what the fuck you're doing yet, to do it with a live account, even if it's a minuscule amount, turn them the fuck off. They have no idea what the fuck they're doing in terms of education. They're leading you down the primrose lane, and you're going to fucking fail. If you win initially, it's fucking luck. Because I had nine months of that kind of shit, and it was shocking to learn that I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You have to do these things correctly. Or you're going to painfully pay the price. You're going to make your learning longer than it needs to be. You're going to lose fucking money needlessly. You're going to stress yourself out. You're going to build up all this fucking mental scar tissue. Because that's exactly what this produces. It builds mental scar tissue. Doing the wrong shit. Thinking you're going to be the exception to the fucking rule. You're going to be the one that does it. So you can go on social media and tell ICT you're full of shit, motherfucker. This is what I did. Here's my receipts. Bring them. Because I guarantee you, you aren't doing this. You aren't going to do it. So why invest the time, the money, the energy, the emotions into it? Because when you don't do it and you do fail doing it this way, go running out there not knowing how to trade, going into funded accounts, going into live accounts, doing all this bullshit, you feel all of that regret. And that's mental scar tissue. You know what happens when you have scar tissue? It's not as elastic. It doesn't allow movement. It's restricting. And it's so hard to overcome that level of fear, that level of anxiety, that performance anxiety that you've created for yourself because you didn't fucking listen to someone that has done the same shit and told you, you're going to do it wrong. And once you have that, this is why I tell all you young guys, you just want to go out there and fucking do the shit I told you I went through. Because you say, hey, look, man, it's just like in the movie in Jaws. The three guys are sitting down there. They're all showing each other's fucking scars. Look at this one here. Well, look at this one. I got one better. Oh, I got one better than this one. Look at this. I got to pull my fucking pants leg up. This one here is a thresher shark. It got me. Kind of one up the next guy. Oh, I lost more money than you. I blew more accounts than you. Like, that's a fucking badge of honor. That's stupid. That's dumb. You are wasting fucking time. We don't have that now, folks. Look around. Shit's getting upside down. You're going to fucking have to be paying a whole lot of money for a steak dinner. Okay? Your carnivore diet? Patrick, you better be making some fucking money, motherfucker, because it's beefs that got to get real expensive. Real expensive. Start getting a freezer. Stock that shit up because it's, it's going to get bad. 
But if you create this mental fucking scar tissue by doing the wrong things continuously, expecting a positive outcome, and when it doesn't happen, then you start thinking, shit, I wish I would have not done this. I wish I would have waited. And then you beat yourself up and you talk to yourself subconsciously. You're driving to work, hating the fucking fact that you didn't do what you thought you were going to be able to be successful in. But you're going back to that shithole of a fucking job. Sitting next to fucking Carl. Fucking prick. He's going to look at you and laugh. He's going to look at you and laugh and he's going to say, I fucking told you. It's a pipe dream. And I'm telling you how to stick it straight up Carl's fucking ass. Carl's going to be working there the rest of his fucking life. You're out of there. You're leaving. You're fucking firing that place. They're not firing you. You're not being made redundant. It's being made redundant. Why the fuck are you going to wait around and sit there and spend eight, ten fucking hours a day, hour to fucking commute, just to make what you can fucking make in one fucking scalp? Make the whole fucking salary in a week in one fucking scalp. You're going to keep fucking around, doing dumb shit, and prolong that experience. You keep pushing it away further and further when you don't listen to good advice. You have to listen. You don't have the benefit of, well, it's going to take me two years. No you, no, you don't have that now. You have this year, okay? You have this fucking year. Time is running the fuck out. And all the advantages, all the opportunities that we have right now, these freedoms, these things, it's all going to change. You don't realize it, but it's going to happen Real sudden, there's going to be an event that takes place, and this shit's going to go upside down. And most of you are going to know what I just said, and it's going to be too late because you didn't do anything I told you to do. You're not going to have food. You're not going to have over-the-counter medicines. You're not going to have resources that you take advantage of right now and just, well, you know, everybody can do that. Toilet paper. <laughs> I told everybody, buy toilet paper. Get stocked up. This shit's going to be fucking like gold. And everybody laughed. And then you couldn't find anything to wipe your ass, could you? Yep. Wait till you see what's coming next. You better, you better take this serious. I'm telling you, you better take it serious. This is a Noah's Ark event type thing. You better listen. Because the fucking storm clouds are growing. It's getting dark, folks. And guess what? I think I just felt a fucking raindrop. You have to be seriously doing the right things and stop fucking around. Are you listening? I know sometimes I can get on a rant here and entertain you, but with everything I'm saying, I mean it. And I've been batting a thousand since 2019 with all this bullshit. If you listen, you have all the advantages. If you don't listen, you're going to regret it. You won't be successful. You won't be prepared. And you're going to feel a level of stress that you can't even imagine right now. You think it's hard right now, not making your ends meet? You can't even imagine what's coming. I'm going to feel it, and I'm well off. All these jokers out there claiming they're, they're rich, talking down to people, you're broke, you're broke. They're all going to be crying the fucking blues just like everybody else. Money ain't going to have the same effect as it does right now. So you need to be able to get what you can when you can get it. Stock your house up. Make your house ready. Non-perishable food. I'm just going to fucking say it, folks. Listen, if you can't see what's about to break loose, it's easy to say, oh, over there. It's happening over there. It's not going to bother us. No. Mm -mm -mm. It's going to be everywhere. You think that shit that they were trying to stick in everybody for everybody's health was all they were going to do? No. No, no. That's priming. 
That's what that is. That's priming. You're all going to be expected to do shit that you don't want to do. Or you can't come to work. You can't make your money. What do you do then? You have a plan B for that? It's a lot of shit coming. Too much for a podcast or Twitter space. And I'm not even promising that this is going to be an answer for it, but it's the best I got. Because I don't know. I don't know where to put my wealth, where I feel like it's safe. It won't be. Nothing will be. They're all going down. Everything's going down. You're being told it's a great reset. It's going to be great for them. Universal basic income is what you're going to be expected to be placed on, and I'm not doing that. And as long as this is made available, and this is why I say sometimes when I say a little too much, when I say that there may be a time when we can't trade, There's never been a time in history ever where there's been more entrepreneurs speculating and making their own paychecks in markets, in trading, than it is right now. And you think that they're not going to fuck with us? We're the mavericks. We're the fucking rebels. We're the ones that can put our fingers up and say, fuck you. Fire me, bitch. I'm unemployable. Fuck off. But what happens when a convenient, unfortunate event unfolds where the stock market won't open? What happens when central bank digital currencies make it a little different for Forex? What happens when a lot of currencies just don't exist anymore and they unify. Are you prepared for something like that? Let me remind you, back in 1992, when I was looking at a daily range in the S&P with the approximation of a stop loss today, that was the daily range. I couldn't fathom days like we see now. It was completely unrealistic for me to imagine the volatility that we all had the benefit to engage in and just take it for granted. This is the way it is, baby. This is the way it is. No, it's not. It's just the way it is right now. And that can severely change. It could multiply bigger than this. Who says it fucking can't? Because I'm going to tell you something. I would have put the million dollars immediately on the fucking table in the 90s, that it would never look like it does today. I couldn't see it. I didn't have the visibility. Just like you can't see what I'm telling you is coming. I had people quit my private mentorship and call me a fucking loony motherfucker. I was out of my mind. They quit because I told them that the world was going to come to a fucking halt. Something shit was coming. I was tweeting this in 2019. I said something wicked is fucking coming in July. Then I tweeted it again in October 2019. I said some shit is coming worse than 9-11 when they had all of that shit. They were priming people. And the whole world went to a screeching halt. You can't see your family members. You can't hug your dying relatives. You can't see a funeral. You can't go to work. You got to work at home. Nobody believed any of that was possible. And folks, listen. Listen. It hasn't even started yet. It 
hasn't even began. And you're walking around looking at your smartphone, distracted like a fucking zombie, worrying about who likes you on social media, who you control better than the next guy, who has the most cool YouTube, who does the fanciest live streams, who's following many this many and that one has more followers than me or that. That's nothing. That's stupid shit. If you're trying to compete with somebody right now and it's, you're oblivious to what's coming, you need to wake the fuck up. If you have a family, you have children, a spouse, a significant other, a partner, you need to start talking about how you can preserve your way of living as best way as you can. Secure food for your home that's non-perishable. Look what the fuck just happened up in Ohio. You think that's random? You think it happening in South Carolina days later? How about in Texas? You think that's just, oh, well, they have lots of the train derailments all year long. You just, just do the numbers and look at all the statistics. There's a lot of train derailments. Yeah, there is. There is. Absolutely. But now we have a convenient opportunity for all this shit to leak hazardous material into our drinking water, our well water, the Great Lake. And those rivers, they tie together, folks. They don't teach things in school like they used to. That's why I homeschooled my kids. We were doing the public school for a little while. But when I found out that they weren't even teaching history, they stopped teaching civics the way we learned it. We learned about the Constitution. We learned about the way laws are really made, not fucking executive orders. And listen, don't, don't get your ass all twisted up here thinking I'm a Trumper because I, I said that he was going to get elected and they're going to turn everything upside down with him. He had a role in all this bullshit. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I've never voted in my fucking life ever. I'm outside that bullshit. It's a Hegelian dialect. It's... You think you have a fucking choice and you don't. You don't. And some of you that walk around and you think you have everything fucking figured out because you're a Republican or you're a Democrat or you're an independent or you don't vote like me. And you got your head in the fucking sand. You have no idea what's coming. It's going to roll over top of you like a steam fucking roller and you're going to be shocked how everything becomes so hard. Am I making any money talking to you right now? Is there any ads running? No. I'm telling you this because I care. I'm telling you this because I knew this shit back in 2010. And I wanted to get out in front of it as much as I could, but I was afraid to talk about it. And I was trying and trying to drop hints, and they all called me fucking Chicken Little on Twitter before. Yeah, well, nobody's fucking laughing. In March of 2020, were they? And they ain't even started yet. All they did was gain some ground that they're never going to give up. War is coming. In the mainland of the U.S., our citizens, we don't know how to deal with a Pearl Harbor event. Not in the mainland, we don't. People are wigging out about what took place up there at that train derailment and that hazardous material and then exploding it and burning it and all that shit flying up everywhere. That's very close to where I live. Very close. We got friends and neighbors that are on the coast, not the coast, but the uh, border of Ohio and Pennsylvania. And their animals are dead. We have a well here. I'm concerned. What happens? Does that shit make it into my water supply? What's your, what's your procedure? What do you do? I already distill all my water. 
a reverse osmosis system may may not work. I don't know. I am not a scientist. I don't know the fuck. I don't know what what that shit was. Is it going to be a problem for me? I don't know. We're going to be met with these types of things in a more intensification and more frequency and shit's going to get bad. And if a war does kick off, you think for a minute, for a minute, you think that that ain't going to affect the markets. This, I had students that were in my mentorship talking to me about how they don't want to hear about this shit. I'm here to learn how to trade. Listen, motherfuckers. This is what's going to cause these markets to move around. I understand you're new. I understand that you can't understand every simple thing in the world that's going to have a major impact, like a war. Just because it's in another country doesn't mean it won't have reverberations in the marketplace. It's absolutely going to fucking fuck up some shit. Let's just be real for a moment. What the fuck happens? What happens when a small tactical nuke falls right in fucking downtown New York? You think they're going to open this fucking stock market up? What happens if you're in a trade like I was on September 11th in the S&P? Coming home after taking my son to school because I had joint custody. Beautiful day. I can, I'm telling you, I remember it like it was like yesterday. Beautiful day. I'm driving down Mace Avenue. I'm thinking to myself, man, it's a gorgeous day. This is a good day. I was talking to a gentleman named George Lutz. If you Google him, you'll find out that his son, who I was trying to talk him out of that day of joining the military, he was telling me, yeah, my son's joining the military. I said, George, please. I was teaching how to trade S&P. I said, please. Talk him out of it. He goes, no, 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 it's good. We, you know, we come from a military background. Our, our family says, you know, it's something. I understand what you're saying, but, you know, we're all in full support of it. And I had this unction come over me, this deep, like, I got to tell him, tell him not to do it. And I was literally, before I went to take my son to school, that's what I was doing. And when I came home, hit the remote control on my TV, and I just realized I'm talking to you about something that, may not even be that interesting to all of you. If you're not interested, you can go, go about your business and stuff. But uh, I'm on a rant now, so this is what it is. But I turn my TV on, and I see the first building. It was The plane had already hit that one. And I thought it was like a preview for a movie. I'm like, oh, look at that. I said, it's, you know, airplane, small airplane, they said. Hits uh, World Trade Center building, whatever it was. I'm like, wow. Man, it's terrible. They, somebody just probably just died in that airplane and probably maybe hurt somebody, caused a fire in the building. So I, I, it's CNBC basically is what I'm watching. I go in and grab a glass of orange juice. I'm getting my stuff together. And I sign back into internet relay chat. Get George Lutz back on the, the DM with me, the, the equivalent of it that then. And, uh, I literally watched the second plane go into it live. They didn't open up the stock market that day, folks. And I was stuck in a fucking trade. They didn't open the market up the next day either. Or the next day. And nobody knew what the fuck was going on. Now, you got a country like Russia... You can say what you want about them. But they don't tend to be the pushover type of people. Okay? And you got this NATO regime building up around them. And I'm not pro-Russia. I'm not pro-anything. I don't want this shit to happen. I don't want it to happen. But I'm a fucking realist, okay? You got to at least identify that shit's moving to a point where, you know, there's no better distraction to all the bullshit that we've been enduring for the last three years than all of a sudden the 4th of July comes to mainland USA. Something that's never happened before. You want to see people lose their shit? Lose their fucking mind? 
go nuts. But one of those things touched down in this country. And you will see the depravity of humanity, the depths of chaos. And if the markets are open, levels of volatility you can't even imagine. Everything would be fucking moving all over the fucking place. And they will halt it. And you can't do shit about it. You're in a position. You're not in a position. You didn't have a stop loss. It won't matter. Russia's not going to sit back and get pushed around and defeated without responding in the only way they can. And they're telling everybody, this is, this is what we're going to do. Not like North Korea. <laughs> we're going to do this and we're going to shoot some missiles out in the water. I believe if we push harder and they feel like they have to respond, we're going to see some shit landing in our country. And I'm not ready for it. None of you are. And I'm not trying to instill fear. I'm not paranoid. I'm not worried about it to the degree where it's paralyzing me. But I've been made as ready as I possibly can with the resources that my family uses on a day-by-day -day basis. And right now, you know, everybody's just quietly going about their business. Nobody has to wear their masks anymore. Some people choose to. Everybody's going back to work. We're watching sports, the Super Bowl. I've never really watched the Super Bowl until the last one. And I thought to myself, oh, this is nothing like I heard everybody talk about the last Super Bowl. It seemed pretty cool. I mean, I didn't like Rihanna's you know, routine. I was afraid she was going to fall off that damn thing. But, uh, you know, I endured it. It didn't seem too bad. But it didn't convert me to be a, a football fan now. <laughs> but I'm sitting here thinking to myself, you know, Everybody's going about their business, staring into their phones, pretending like this is all normal shit. But haven't you noticed? Maybe you've noticed. You're driving down the road. People have a whole lot more hostility, more aggression, more road rage, reckless, speeding, not giving a shit if they wreck their car, tear up somebody else's stuff. Maybe you're in stores and you're just seeing people just break out into just uncivilized behavior, cussing people out, going into stores and taking whatever the fuck they want, not paying for it. You don't notice these things increasing everywhere? I mean, I live in a pretty good neighborhood and I still see that kind of shit. But it's easy to block it out. Like, oh, it's not, it hasn't nothing to do with me. It's happening in somebody else's state, happening in another country. It's not my business. It ain't going to worry me until it does. What happens with you and your family when shit goes upside down? Do you have a plan for it? Because if you're in this just to make money to buy Lamborghinis and watches and nice clothes so you can look like you're fucking together on social media, and you're not preparing your household. Listen, folks, it didn't stop me when people were quitting my paid mentorship when I was telling this stuff. I had people literally in tears write me emails and leave voicemails on my cell phone thanking me that they listened because their country shut the fuck down and there was no food in their stores. And they were able to weather it. It hasn't even started yet. If you think that it's over and you just got through it, nope. The only thing it did was they gained ground. They gained ground. That means they got things in the right position. Like chess. It's been like this for years. And everything they did for World War I 
is repeating again right now. But most of you don't even know because you're not even learning history anymore. It's, it's madness. Like it's madness right now. But you're t constantly distracted. We have sports. We have celebrities. We have social media influencers that can entertain us. And I don't want you looking at me like one of them. I'm only spending this year with you because of this type of shit. I want a clear conscience. I've said everything. Like a watchman, I've warned you. It wasn't just my private mentorship people that know it. I've now said it publicly. We're all fucked. Whether you want to believe it, whether you like it or not, we're fucked. So you need to do what you can do to be diligent about learning how to do this to get a second income. When you make the money, buy the things that your family needs, non-perishable foods, can openers that don't run by electric, medicines that you might need over-the-counter stuff. Wouldn't hurt to ask your doctor if you have prescription medications to ask for a couple months in advance. Tell them you're going to Hawaii. You're going to be spending time with a, a relative down there, and you just want to make sure you have an extra supply of it. Because if the supply chain stops and you need it, insulin, heart medication, blood pressure medication, how about prescriptions? When's the last time you had your eyeglasses updated? Let me tell you something. I'm going every six months. I'm making sure I got glasses. I need them. I can see far away, but I can't read anything in front of me. And I have books. I have things I need to know and read if I need to refer to something. If I don't have glasses, I'm fucked. I'm light sensitive. I have to have specific prescriptions. I wear sunglasses at night. I need it. Everything that you would see driving down the road or inside of a store looks like a huge starburst in my eyes. I can't, I can't tolerate it. It hurts. So I make sure I have glasses. And it protected me. And I had glasses when we couldn't get in to see our optometrist. We couldn't make prescription calls to update you know, the kids' eyeglasses because I was proactive about getting them ahead of time. When everybody was laughing and saying, nothing's gonna happen, Chicken Little. And we were told, you can't go near anybody. I don't have all the answers, folks. I don't claim to be the genius. I'm not. I'm not a mental giant. I just know what's placed on my heart. I'm sharing it. I've said before in 2019 and 2020, and I was literally ahead of all this stuff. All of it. I wanted to be wrong. And I wept in the ears of my paid students. And some of them laughed and that shit got leaked. I'm not ashamed of that. And I'm not afraid to, to tell you I'm not ashamed here now. What's coming, none of us are ready for. You think these guys on YouTube and social media that are pretend to be something special with their social media candy, their cars, their houses. They're doing this, they're going here, they're doing that, they're wearing this. They're in for a rude awakening. And everybody that's chasing that kind of shit, they're in for it too. We're all going to be lucky if we can find sustenance because money ain't going to be the answer. You have to get the money to get the shit that you need because wealth ain't going to be a thing. 
there's no safe place. Crypto, it's fucked. Gold, it's fucked. Silver, fucked. They're going to hit every safe haven. So now you heard it. You know it now. Cat's out of the bag. Every safe haven is going to get fucking hammered. There is no safe place to put money. Money is about to change. It's about to be reinvented. And it ain't going to be a casual, smooth thing. They've only told you, central bank digital currencies, to that way you're primed. You know, okay, when we tell you this is the solution to the problem, you're all going to be like, okay, well, at least our government's figured it all out and we have a plan in place. Because I remember them talking about this. So good on them for being proactive when it's where they're leading us anyway. Everything you buy will be monitored. And now money will be able to be turned on and off. You can't make purchases for this thing. You can make purchases for that. You can't spend your money this way, but you can spend it on this. That's control. Cash. Who uses cash? The drug trade, right? What do you think their response is going to be? You think they're just going to sit back and say, well, it was a good run while it lasted? Nope. No way. Some of these dudes are really, really rich. And if they say cash ain't no longer king and your shit ain't worth anything, what's their, what's their response going to be? A lot of chaos. A lot of crazy shit. You don't want to fuck with those type of people because they get shit done. Like you have no idea the shock waves that's coming and everything that's going to be affected. And it's yes, it might be a source of anxiety hearing this. It may be comic strips to some of you thinking this is bullshit. It ain't never going to happen. Uh huh. I hope I'm wrong. I want you all to be able to laugh at me. I'm okay with that. I want to be able to say, I was really wrong, man. I, I'm so thankful that this shit did not happen. But we're about to enter some real science fiction level shit, folks. And maybe if I started this whole thing teaching publicly on YouTube and like I'm doing here on Twitter. If I said, this is what I'm doing this for, you would turn me off. You would never listen. You'd be like, it's fucking crackpot. But I knew if I sat with you and I showed you what was going to happen in these charts before it happened, and you know authorship when you see it. How do you think I know all this stuff before it happens? What color's my hat? The average person wouldn't know this. Your bank buddy, friend, relative, they don't know this. Walking through life, seeing other people oblivious to it, knowing it's coming, and being told, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. I can't. And I feel better the more I talk. The anxiety I've had for years of wanting to talk about it and warn, and this is why I'm doing it, and this is why I'm doing it, and this is why I'm doing it. I don't care what people think about it anymore. We're long past that shit.
when it really starts, when the lights go out and shit starts unloading, it won't be just my family that I'm going to be thinking and worrying about. I'm going to be thinking about all of you. Did you make your house ready? Did you put your affairs in order? Everything is about to change. And it's going to happen with a very abrupt event. I'm not claiming to know what that is, but I know it's coming. And you're all going to know what it is when it happens. You're going to remember these words, this moment, when it happens. This is what he was talking about. We're talking about the three largest superpowers on the planet. And the U.S. is fucking around with these people like it's a game. Look what's going on. The U.S. dollar is about to change from the global reserve currency to fucking toilet paper. Little history lesson for some of you that don't know this. Our country went to Saudi Arabia and said, hey, we're going to protect you. Nobody was threatening them. But we say, hey, we're going we're to protect you. All you have to do in turn is sell all your oil in U.S. dollars. So if they want to buy your oil, they have to be converted to U.S. dollars. And now you're our best friend. What's Saudi Arabia going to do? They're going to be like, oh, well, shit, we saw what you did to Japan. We ain't trying to have none of that. So, okay, we're in business together. Fast forward. We're no longer in the gold standard. Our currency is only worth the rotation because of oil sales. It's bullshit. It's printed out of nowhere. Just pull it out of thin air. And we force every other country around the world to buy another country's main staple commodity in our own currency or else. That's a mafia shakedown, man. <laughs> Listen, you need some protection. We're going to come by and protect you, but you make sure you have our cut. <laughs> That's what it's like. And there is a, there's a, there's a passage that says that uh, at a specific time in the future, there's going to be this coalition of nations that come together. It's going to be unlike anything before. And you hear these people that they beat on the Bible and they preach. They think they know what revelation is. They believe they understand prophecy. They believe this and they believe that. They tell you this is the person that's going to be Antichrist. This is the person that's going to be the false witness. This is the person that's going to pretend to be Jesus. This is the person that's going to be God. This is going to be the end of the world. This is Armageddon. This is how it all ends. This is the mark of the beast. All this stuff. And nobody sees that beast that's described with China, Russia, Turkey, soon to be Saudi Arabia, India, all these nations have come together to the BRICS. You know what they're all collectively doing? Snubbing their nose towards the U.S. and the dollar. That's why the dollar, I'm sorry, that's why the U.S. isn't shown in Bible prophecy. It's not a factor anymore. But those same countries, the bear, the dragon, all these entities that we understand who they are today. We all know that Russia is the bear. It has three ribs in its mouth. 
That's three Slavic nations that it's conquered and took over. But you don't know that because you didn't learn history. It's convenient how they keep that stuff out of there, isn't it? It makes war on one side. It rises up on one side. Every war they ever fought was on one side. You don't know that because you didn't learn history. It's convenient how that works. That fourth dreadful beast is not the new world order. It's forming with Russia, China, India, soon to be Saudi Arabia, Turkey. And what does it do? It tramples down everything else. Commerce is going to change. Why? Because the dollar is going to be made irrelevant. What is that going to do for you in the United States? Hello? Are you paying attention? I have a lot of money. I'm safe. I got it in my 401k. I don't have a 401k where I feel like I'm safe. That money is going to be hit. When you open up a bank account, have you read all the pages before? No. When you make your deposit, you're giving them ownership of the money. With a promissory note, as long as liquidity is there to provide a reasonable exchange and withdrawal, then they'll give you your money back. But if there isn't an opportunity for that to happen, your money is viewed as an investment in the bank. And the laws were changed, and guess what? Bail-ins are coming. That means... The bank says, well, we're not giving you your money, and you deposited it in our account. You signed the papers. You gave us ownership of the money, and we can't provide it back to you because there's no liquidity. There's no opportunity for you to get the money out from our hands. We have to keep it. So you made an investment. That's how we're going to classify it, and you're fucked. You all signed over ownership of your money, just like I did and everybody else that has a bank account. That money is not yours until it's in your hands. What happens when you can't get your money out of the bank or they put controls, which is what they're all pushing for right now? Who's they? Oh, it's just a boring conversation. It's not important who they are. This is the people that's going to be calling all the shots, not the ones that were elected. Control measures is what they'll call them. You can only take out this much money from the bank each day. They can't do that. Come on, ICT. Yeah. They did it in Greece. You can't take more than 75 euros out. It's coming. They did it in China. They put tanks right in front of their banks. You're not getting your money, but you don't see that on our news in the U.S. Why? Because they don't want you thinking, well, shit, I better get some money out and buy some things I need. So you're thinking, let me get my cash out and stuff it in my fucking mattress. It ain't going to work like that. At any given time, they can say, effective right now, paper currency is no longer valid. Come on now, ICT. That's bullshit. Mm -hmm. Why do you think every country is speedily rushing in a fast breakneck speed to get ready for a central bank digital currency? Because once they do that, they own your ass. You don't want to listen to what the leadership says? Oh, no problem. Your bank account is no longer working. Who are you going to complain to? It ain't going to matter. You can't beat it, folks. It's coming whether you like it or not. It's coming. You can't stop them. You can't thwart it. You can't vote against it. They're in every government. They're in every country. It's the way it is. It's been a long effort to get to where they're at right now. And it's not going to fail them. They're going to do what they're going to do.
you're going to be fighting it. Some people are going to rise up and do dumb shit. We need a 1776. No, nah, you fucking, that ain't going to fix shit. That's going to, that's exactly what they want. That's exactly what they're hoping everybody does. They stand up there with their freedom seed projectiles. Google what that is. You'll know what I mean. Standing up and watering the tree of liberty. Yeah, well, when that shit starts happening, guess what happens? The military steps in. It won't be our military, but they're going to be wearing our military garb. But they're going to be somebody else's men and women. And they don't follow the Constitution. So when they're splitting your skull open, they're not worried about getting sued for civil rights of, you know, violations. Because that's what's coming. I know. I have probably turned a lot of you off. And guess what? That's probably a good thing. Because if you're not ready and you want to pull your head inside your shell like a turtle, I can't be faulted when it happens and you didn't do anything because you've heard it now. Because it's coming. It is coming. Over the next couple of months, it's going to be undeniable. It's going to speed up. You're going to see things, and it's going to feel like this can't be happening like this. This is unbelievable. Yeah. Yep. And if you're not ready, there's nothing you can do. You don't tell your friends and you don't tell your family how much you got stored up when you get it. Because they're not going to believe anything if you try to tell them. They're just going to come to your house and try to take your shit. And that's why it's important to have hardware. Things to protect what you got. You don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to hurt anybody. But I don't want people coming into my house thinking they can come in my house when they're not invited. Read between the lines because things are about to get real, real dark. And if this is causing anxiety, you know the best remedy for that? Preparedness. Taking action putting your ass to work about getting whatever you can done while you can. I don't want to work a part-time job. I don't want to do that. It might be worth it for you to do it while you can. It don't take long to get a couple years worth of non-perishable food stored up. And that stuff's worth more than gold when you can't get your hands on food. Folks that are my age or older that know history, we recognize some repeating phenomenon in all the shit that's going on. Anyone around 35 or 30, about in that vicinity and time age, it starts to be a blur. And the younger you get from there, all this seems like a crock of shit. Like there's no way that could be like this. Because you young folks, that you have been indoctrinated. You've been encouraged to be reckless, show disregard for you know being organized. Yeah, just all inclusive social media acceptance, virtue signaling, all this, you know extra shit. And they've trained you to feel like you can say whatever the fuck you want to say on social media and have no consequence. And they've trained you to be unable to have a face-to-face conversation 
and feel empathy for someone else. They've made you callous. They've blinded you to the real opportunities that are before you, and they've painted you inside of a small little prison that many of you are hearing me talk through right now. Your whole world is inside that phone. Everything you do, everything you hope to do, where your attention is, and they own and direct that. All from that little box that you pay too much money for each month. And they even remind you and force you to do these updates on your phone that makes it obsolete by design. So that way you go out and buy it again in two years. All this shit you've fallen victim to. But you all think that you're smart. Like you got it all figured out. These young people. You think you have so much more insight because the technology that you have grown up around is taught you to no longer even be human. The things that my generation and those older than me, you have no idea what it was like for us to grow up in a situation where we would go outside and stay out until the streetlights come on. That's how You didn't see your kids until the streetlights came on. And if you knew your ass wasn't home at the time, you knew you're in trouble. And other people would look out for your other neighbor's children. I wouldn't, and I, when I had children young, I wouldn't let my fucking kids go out and do the things that I did as a kid because the world's different. You grew up in a tech world. Game boys, cell phone, social media. Your perception of the world has absolutely been controlled and directed, scripted. My generation, we're Gen Xers. We're the generation that basically will tell you to your face, you're full of shit, go fuck yourself. We're that transitional generation. We saw technology begin. We watched the internet come up. We were there when AOL would, all that handshaking sound that it would make when the modem connected you. Our generation saw that. We watched that birth. And you're walking around feeling like you own everything. And when someone like me and people that are smarter than me share our time, share our insight, our views on how to make sure you're prepared, you're probably not going to hear it like you should because you think you're smarter. You think you're more edgier. You got more technology behind you. Oh, you're an old head. You don't know nothing. I'm hoping that you don't do that with this conversation tonight. Because you don't want to find out that you dismissed something that sounds too far-fetched to be possibly real. But then when you wake up in the middle of it, you feel like a fool because you didn't do anything about it. If you're young and you have the energy and the time to do so, and you can work another job and help your family if you're still living home with mom and dad. Some of you are done that. Some of you went to college, couldn't do it, had to move back in with your parents. Hey, man, I had to do that with my aunt and uncle. I had to do that. There's no shame in that. That's, that's family. That's what families do. But it's weird. You don't see that, di- that, that dynamic in the family element today. Most families are fighting each other, hating each other because of what? Everything that's been going on. They can't afford it. They can't fucking deal with the pressure, the stress. And it hasn't even really started yet. Some of you that asked for opportunities to sit and talk with me and if you could just meet me and Let's go to a pub. Let's go to a bar. Let's have a drink. I don't drink alcohol. 
I would just like to sit and talk and pick your brain. If you did, this is the conversation I'd have with you. And you wouldn't want to have this conversation with me. So I've never really wanted the opportunity to present itself. This is what's on my heart. I know what's coming. You have time now. You have opportunity right now. You have resources being given to you for free. Experience, wisdom, proof, evidence. What are you going to do with it? You're going to waste it? You're going to take advantage of it? Think it's going to always be here? Oh, ICT, he'll be back here next year. He's talking shit. I might not be. You might not be. You can't defer things years away from now. We don't have that luxury anymore. Some of you, I'm going to say this and I'm going to close it. I did warn you we're going to have a long one. <laughs> Some of you probably have a spouse, a partner, a significant other. That they don't know that we had this conversation tonight. They just know I'm that guy that takes up too much of your time talking about trading and breakers and order blocks and fair value gaps and you probably shared your excitement and your hopes and dreams of what you're going to be able to do with this information and how it's going to impact you and your family. That's wonderful. I hope that exactly unfolds just like you want it to. I hope that's what happens. And maybe you're thinking now when this ends, the normal jacked up feeling that you feel like you're energized, you're all Pumped up. It's hard to reach for that right now, isn't it? You want me to somehow say I've been pulling your leg. This has all been a joke just to troll you. It's not. And this is probably going to be a conversation that you don't want to even mention to them. But them knowing who you are, they're probably going to see you and you're going to read you like a book. And I say, what's wrong? And some of you are going to dismiss it to me, like, oh, nothing. To which they'll know is a lie. And others will be like, well, I'll just listen to that guy. Up until tonight, he's been a pretty good uh, source of information. But now I think i got to second guess all that stuff. That's normal for you to feel that. You'd be crazy if you didn't at least feel that. Lord knows, I know. When it was laid on my heart to say it in 2019, all the way through 2020 and 21 and 22, and now we're here in 2023. In 2016, before Trump got elected, when I was telling everybody he's going to get elected and he's going to be used as a fall guy. And America's going to become Venezuela 2.0. Everybody laughed. Everybody laughed. I said, we're going to have a banana republic in this country. And guess what? <laughs> Look around. None of our government fucking knows what the hell's going on. They're all Muppets. How can we have faith in this? Regardless of what party you're in. It's not, It's nonsense. And it's designed. It's designed to get people pissed the fuck off so they can start acting like fools, uncivilized fools. Go out in the streets so they can do what? Martial law. And when martial law kicks off, it never will go away. We will become a police nation, a police state across the whole 50 states. 
and that noose will be tightened. And there's nothing you're going to do to stop it. The worst thing you can do is when it starts kicking off, start acting like a fool. Don't get out there and act like a vigilante and think you're going to do something. You ain't doing shit. You got to protect your family. Stay safe. I used to say, good luck, good trading. Notice I don't say that anymore. I want you to be thinking about how you and your family can be safe. Be a gray man. Don't draw attention to yourself. But what the fuck are you doing right now, Ice-T? You're talking to all these people listening to this shit. They probably think you're nuts. I don't give a fuck. I feel like I got to say it. I'm saying it. I don't care what your feelings are about me. My conscience is clean. I don't have to worry about it anymore. If it doesn't happen and you all get to laugh at me, so what? If you listen and you prepare, guess what? You got groceries for a while. You don't have to buy new groceries. And I eat canned goods that are three years old, and I ain't never got sick eating it. You rotate it. I had members in my membership. I bought extra canned goods, and it didn't. It didn't uh, get ugly in my my country. And now my food's bad. Wasted money. If you threw that away, you did waste money. Those Best Buy dates are just for you to go buy more. Sorry. But you're... You've probably been talked to too much tonight. And you want a silver lining in all this. I wish I had one. For the last 13 years, I have used all of you as a wonderful distraction to what I knew what was coming. And I struggled with courage to come out and talk about this more openly. And that's what I regret. I wish, and I know most of you would have dismissed me, said this guy's full of shit. It ain't gonna never happen. He's got some good technical analysis, but he's a weirdo. <laughs> but the people that's been with me for a long time, that were with me when I was on Twitter before, and they started censoring my tweets, that's why I left Twitter. Nobody ran me off Twitter, but Twitter. When I was trying to post things and it never made it there, that was enough for me. I was talking too much. So I said, I'm out of here. The folks that were with me back then know I said that Trump was going to be elected and I was not supporting him. I told you all then, I'm not voting for him. I've never voted in my life, ever. My faith is that none of that shit works. And I think Reagan was the last real elected president. And they tried to pull shenanigans with his ass too. And ever since then, you were selected. Can I do anything about it? Nope. I'm not losing any sleep over it either. They're going to run this shit like the way they want to run it. You ain't changing it. Your vote ain't changing shit. Regardless of what side you're on, it won't matter. So the worst thing you can do is take what I'm telling you and get all worked up into a frenzy and try to do something stupid because you ain't changing it. It's written. It's going to happen. You know, changing it. And if you're on the fence about it happening, just wait around. You'll see. You'll be convinced of it shortly. When it kicks off, it gets really fast after that. So I've tried to live my life reaching as many as I possibly could in the way that I felt was the safest. I think that was the best way of thinking about it like that. 
dropping breadcrumbs as I went, getting confident, talk a little bit more, getting confident, tell a little bit more. But I don't have an answer to it. I'd be lying if I said that I thought I was going to figure out an answer early on. But there isn't any. It's just, it's going to happen. There's a lot of you out in the world that would say, well, if, if it's going to happen, I would have rather not known. Just let it happen. Known about it. Is going to be, give me something to worry about. Well, what about your family members, your children? Wouldn't you want to make the best of the time? Doesn't it kind of change your perspective on what you do with your time now? Knowing that there's so many sudden, abrupt changes that are coming, and the freedoms that we have right now, take advantage of them. That's why I bought an RV. I want to get out there and see some shit because there's a time coming I won't be able to. Neither would you. Just so you know, I've never been vaccinated. I didn't believe in it. And you're welcome to unfollow me if you think that's a big thing to do. Team vaccination. My youngest son was injured by a vaccination. Not the COVID one, but when he was born, they shot him with something and uh, his blood pressure crashed and he's had all kinds of issues in life since then. So please don't preach to me about vaccination safety because it's bullshit. I had a girlfriend that uh, I dated. Her name's Robin Saunders. Beautiful girl. Healthy as shit. Fit, aerobic instructor, fitness trainer, the whole business. They took that vaccination. She took the Pfizer. And uh, 24 hours later, her brain swelled up and her heart swelled up and she died. The real estate agent that uh, I used to purchase the home I'm in right now talking to you, her best friend's daughter took a vaccination that was told by everyone. And everybody's telling her, don't do it, don't do it. Now she has heart issues and she's 16. Those heart issues aren't going to go away. These same things that cause these injuries and what all of you feel like you're protected with by having, having taken one or two or boosters or whatever, uh, they're making it so if you fly anywhere, every country, you're going to have to have that. Don't blame me. Wait, because it's coming. It's already in the works. I don't fly. <laughs> so I don't give a shit. There's going to be so many control measures placed on everyone globally. They're going to force you to do things that some of you, even me, said, no, I'm not going to do that. What is your thoughts about that when they say you're going to do this? Or else. You ever thought about that? When it's more than your job, your ability to move around. You ever think about that? When I had a motorcycle back in 2009, 
I had a visor on my helmet that I could lift up the whole face front of the helmet. I made the mistake of doing that one day. <laughs> Bug flew right in my mouth, and I swallowed it. It was uh, not pleasant. Ain't nothing I could do. Once it got back to the back of my throat, it was, it was involuntary. Boom. Couldn't spit it out. Here it was. And when you're going 100 mile an hour, that's going to be the last thing you're worrying about. You're worrying about making sure you don't lose control of the bike. How do you feel about eating bugs? Because that's what they're putting in food. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're putting in food now. What if you don't like to have that in your food? Can you do anything about it? Well, they're making laws to change the fact that they got to tell you they're putting it in there. Do you have a shellfish allergy? Because if you have a shellfish allergy, you're going to find out that the foods that you have been eating all along now have cricket flour in it. Now suddenly you're having anaphylactic shock because they didn't announce it in the ingredients on your food that you're eating. That's why processed foods shouldn't be eaten. You don't know what they're putting in it. Whole foods. When you go to the grocery store, at least this is for the states, you ever notice how everything in the middle of the grocery store, in the center aisles, it's all the junk food, the processed food. When I go to the grocery store, I only go into those inner aisles for sugar for my wife because she drinks coffee. I don't drink coffee. I get flour, and I may get a pancake mix because my sons, they like them. And we get Canadian maple syrup. Everything else is predominantly bought on the outside rim of the supermarket grocery store. Why? Because that's where all the whole foods are on a grocery store. All the vegetables, the eggs, the milk, the meats. Never noticed that, did you? In the middle is where they're hurting everybody in to make them sick with processed foods. Blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, disease. That's what's inside those aisles at the grocery store. You probably lived your entire life, you young folks, on Hot Pockets and fucking Pop-Tarts. And you're poisoning yourself. You're shortening your whole entire life eating convenient foods and going through drive through menus, McDonald's, which ain't even food. Let me, let me tell you something. I know the people that make the buns for Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, Hardee's, Arby's, the breadsticks for Olive Garden. And I've walked the floor of that vicinity that makes those things that we consume as a, as a nation. And one of the ingredients that's on that floor that's produced in all of those ingredients has a real big sign on the outside of it. It gets thrown in every one of their products. It's a known carcinogen. That means it causes cancer. Not sometimes. It causes cancer. And every one of those recipes call for that ingredient. Ask yourself, why is that? Think about that next time you want to run to the fast food line and get your dollar menu, number three value meal. How about your french fries from McDonald's? You like how pretty they are? You never see a spot on any of those french fries. You ever wonder how that happens? 
Because McDonald's says they want French fries that look perfect. So they tell the farmers that grow, use this agent, spray it on there so it keeps the insects off of it. But that same shit that they spray, they can't go back out in the field for weeks because it's dangerous to them. And then they have to be treated a certain way to get that shit off so it can be sold as food. These are the same french fries when you find them six years later when you're trying to vacuum out your car because you're trading it in to get something that you shouldn't have been paying for too. Too much money for another car. And you're trying to get it all cleaned up so you get the most money to trade in. And you find those same fucking french fries that look like the same thing they looked like when you first bought them that day. They never, ever get eaten by insects. Take your french fries. Put it out on the sidewalk this spring when the weather's nice. See if any ants go and eat them. They won't touch it. But you're munching them motherfuckers down, aren't you? Give me a supersize fry. Supersize me. Walking around with blinders on, you have no idea you're being poisoned. Every day. You guys start making some changes, folks. Some of them more drastic than others. The whole point of being here is learn to live a better life. Longer, healthier, more fruitful. If I'm wrong and you do all the right things, you'll be healthier. You'll have more money. And you won't have to fucking work with Carl. That's the only way I can end this one with a little bit of light humor, folks. Everything I said here, I mean it. I don't regret it. And if you don't want to follow me anymore after this, I still wish you good luck. I wish you safety. I wish nothing but prosperity and Do what you can. Not all of us are going to be ready for it. I don't think I'm ever going to be ready for it. I have as much as I can get. And even then, I still don't know. But I guess time's going to tell, huh? The markets keep trading. Bitcoin goes to 150000 I'm not saying it will. I could be wrong. And I really, really want to be wrong. I want you all to be able to laugh and say, man, remember that time when you were talking all that bullshit? Look how good everything is. It never happened. Yes. Please let that happen. Let it happen like that. I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with it unfolding and me not having said whatever I feel in my heart that I've said tonight and what I've said to my private students years ago. They know. I told them this stuff before it happened. And I'm not claiming to be a prophet. I'm not a new Nostradamus. I'm a human being with a heart and I don't want anybody to suffer. And I feel helpless because I can't stop it. And I don't have an answer. This is the only thing I can do. And it might not be effective for most of you. But I can't be faulted for it. And it'll be easier for you to just say, okay, this guy's fucking crackpot. I knew it was too good to be true. He had to go off in some weird shit. He talked about the vaccinations. I'm, I'm following him. Whatever. I'm not judging you. I'm showing up every day to invest in you. 
I'm talking to you in a manner that's in a medium that's not monetized. Do I sound like I'm rushed to go somewhere else? Like I got something better to do? This is where I'm put right now. And I feel like what I'm telling you tonight is what I'm supposed to tell you. I don't know why sometimes I feel like I got to do it. I don't know. But I feel better when I do. And when it happens, I'm relieved. I'm shocked sometimes when it happens. I'll leave it to you to decide where it comes from. I'm not trying to be something clairvoyant. I'm not saying anything like that at all. But if you have a friend that just happens to know what you should do all the time and you listen to them and it always serves you well, just think of me as that. That's all you got to do. Do the best you can. That's all you can do. And don't be anxious for any of it. Because you can't stop it. You're not going to change it. The only thing you do is try to prepare your household as best as you can to at least try to make it better than it would be if you didn't prepare. That's pretty much it. That's all I got for tonight. So we've learned uh, one approach trading with a funded account. Huh. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'll have a video up for you by uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, New York local time. Spend your time more lovingly with your friends and family. Be mindful of the time an opportunity that we have right now. Appreciate the opportunity of the relationships that you have. Let your friends and your family members know that you love them. Really, grab them, look them in the eye, and just say, you know what? I haven't said this to you in a while, but I appreciate and I love you. I'm thankful that you are in my life, and I want you to know that. Try to find things that keep you on a positive path, mindset. As a younger man, when I had anxiety, when I had panic attacks, I would be a mess right now. I would be a mess. I don't have that. I don't have any of that. Even though I know that this is likely to be very, very difficult for every one of us, I'm not nervous. I'm not terrified and scared like the world was going to come closing in on me. I've accepted the fact that it's going to be uncomfortable. And having money and having things isn't going to make me exempt. Everyone's going to be affected by it. So the creature comforts that you and your family are used to, try to find ways to accumulate those things, things to do when the power goes out. Because if things get ugly, people are going to act foolish, and the means of controlling them, they'll kill the power. Can you keep yourself cool? Can you keep yourself hot, warm? If it's cold where you're at, how about lights? If the lights go out, can you navigate through your home? You have candles, batteries, you have blankets, toiletries, toothpaste, things that you're not thinking about right now. You'd be surprised how much more comfortable 
if things get ugly like this, things that we take for granted every day. Feels good to have a clean mouth, doesn't it? Dental floss, it's inexpensive. But what happens if you can't go out and get it? Nobody thinks about it until it's too late. It's all easily obtained right now, and it's expensively. So, anyway, food for thought. It's time for another scoop of ice cream. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Be safe.